Hello friends. This is God of Fiction how are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto had power of Phoenix Devil and fell in love with Rias Grimori, Akino, Rossweiss. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Lilith, the current capital of the Satan territory was one of the most active cities in the underworld. Like the human world, it resembled a normal place, filled with houses, parks, inhabitants and, unlike Earth, a purple sky with black clouds. However, despite what most would think about the weird skies, the rarest thing was that the population consisted on devils. Most of them used their strength for bad purposes, such as raping innocent humans, killing them or even to fight against other demons. That happened more often in the past, many were hungry for more power and, eventually, that led to a civil war between two factions of devils, the old Satan faction and the anti-Satan faction. They had different thoughts of government after the Great War ended, and while the first faction wanted to continue the war the second one just desired peace. Due to that, a civil war forced its way to rise between the weakened devils. This conflict lasted for almost a decade until five demons from different families all stood together and defeated the old faction. One of them, was the older brother of the current leader of the Phoenix clan, Minato Phoenix. His power was unbelievable, he had almost the same level than Sears X Grimori, and, thanks to him and the other leaders of the anti-Satan faction, they managed to defeat their opponents without much trouble. Peace was finally set after years of war, and the underworld flowed with life again. However, it didn't last more than a few months. Minato Phoenix was considered one of the most powerful devils in the whole underworld. Yet, despite his great power, he didn't use them for evil purposes, instead, he preferred to be a calmer guy. Strong and peaceful, such ideal of devil was envied by his best friend Sirzex who thought of Minato to be a perfect devil. Such a mistake of thoughts was understandable for someone who ignored some acts that Minato committed in the past, and the worst of them caused his later exile from the underworld. He slept with Lord Bale's sister, Kashina Bael. In the past, every devil was prohibited from touching that woman or even looking at her. She wasn't allowed to leave the Bale's territory due to her enormous power and beauty, because she was a threat for any clan heir who wanted to marry her. Minato, also one of the most desired men in the underworld, managed to conquer her heart. They met each other in secret and, in one of their encounters, the fruit of their love transformed into a baby. But unfortunately for them, Lord Bael eventually found out about their meetings. Now, if only the ruler of the Bael clan had been the one to prohibit her about that, the consequences wouldn't have been so terrible. The problem was that the new four great Satans supported him in his previous decision. For that reason, Minato had broken the law. Despite that Sirzex was his best friend, the only thing he could do was to convince his companions to save Minato and put him in an eternal exile to another dimension. The Phoenix leader accepted his punishment and left the underworld, letting his younger brother to take the place of head of the clan. Obviously, Lord Bael wasn't satisfied and he wanted more payback for the crime committed to his sister. In an act of extreme cruelty, he asked that Naruto, Kashina's unborn son, had to be killed, and thanks to his clan's position as the most important he almost got away with it. Sears X Lucifer, honoring his friendship with Minato and Kashina's and the Phoenix clan's petitions, managed to convince the other leaders to give the boy an opportunity. However, Kashina's brother asked for a temporal exile as well and the council couldn't refuse to it. The four great satans decided that Naruto Bael Phoenix had to be exiled to the same dimension than his father when he turned five years. The legend of the Bael child, Naruto, come here honey. The sweet and melodic voice of his mother interrupted his fun with a dandelion flower. Smiling, the little boy stood up from the ground and ran to his mom. His little hand carried on the same flower from before. It didn't take him more than two seconds to reach her, his short arms extended quickly to give Kashina a warm hug. Kasen, he shouted breaking the hug in a moment to show her the flower. Look, it's for you. She smiled gently, her beautiful face softened deeply. Why? Thank you very much. It's really beautiful. The boy looked in joy as his mother took the dandelion and placed it on her red hair. Her beauty seemed to be highlighted by the new flower in her long and bright hair, and Naruto couldn't stop looking at her. Kashina Bael was one of the most beautiful devils in the underworld. 
Her slender but feminine build was a definite plus for her. She had fair skin, pre-violet eyes, fiery red hair with strands that framed both sides of her face and a black clip that parts her hair to the left, keeping it out of her eyes. She wore a high collar, long-sleeved black blouse with its zip starting on the top and finishing just above her cleavage. However, the blouse only reached to her upper back, leaving only a blue shirt to compensate it. Also, she wore black pants and black shoes along with the symbol of the Bale clan on her chest. He was a little boy, after all and didn't know why most men called his mother beautiful. Not that he had any concept of beauty. Hey Naruto Tan, I'm talking to you. The new voice broke him out of his daze. Tilting his head to the side, his blue eyes noticed the figure of his godfather standing next to his mother. Sears X Ojasan. Sears X Lucifer laughed at his nephew's sudden excitement, his hands reaching his blonde hair to make it more messy. It's been a while, hasn't it? But look at you you're more taller than the other day. Naruto grinned with happiness, his perfectly white denture shining with the daylight. Hey, someday I'll be taller enough to take your place. There was amusement in both Kashina's and Sirzex's faces, oh, but that's exactly what Rias Chan wants. Who's Rias? The boy asked looking at his mother in disbelief. The man retired his hand from Naruto's hair, his eyes closing in thought. Kashina put a hand on her son's head and pointed to Sears X left side. The Lucifer nodded with his eyes still closed and revealed a little girl who was standing with an smile next to the man. Sochi, she's Rias Grammary, your godfather's little sister. Naruto gazed immediately at the girl, her crimson red hair swaying calmly with the wind. I'm Naruto Bael Phoenix, it's a pleasure to meet you. Despite the first impression, the grin on the boy's face faded immediately and he gave her a deep and polite bow. The introduction surprised Rias, who couldn't help but open her mouth in pure astonishment. Such a little boy was also a gentleman. However, her brain eventually made her react and she introduced herself. You already know my name, she said with a sly smile. Looking more closely, Naruto noticed her full appearance. She was a girl of his same age with light skin, blue-green eyes and a petite figure. Her most distinctive feature was her long, crimson-red thigh-length hair with a single hair strand sticking out from the top. Her hair also had loose bangs covering her forehead and side bangs framing her face. Kashina pushed Naruto forward suddenly, her hands moving from his head to his shoulders. Why don't you two go to play? I'm sure you will get along very well. As she expected from her son, he nodded and motioned Rias to walk with him to the little garden the park had. Grinning, she followed him closely, her little arms were behind her back. When both children were far enough, Sirzex's expression adopted a sad look. Kashina, are you really planning to escape with your son? He asked in a low tone. His voice was deep, and had nothing more than seriousness. I'm completely against it. I have the same right to train my nephew. Kashina kept her eyes in her son, the calm vision of that day was giving her a bit of nostalgia. I can't allow Minato to be the one to spend part of his exile with Naruto. I mean, He'll train him in the Fenig's abilities, but he's part of the Bael clan too. He needs me. Sears X sighed in resignation, his blue eyes looking into the purple sky. You know that your brother won't be pleased with your decision. He can barely stand with Naruto living as part of the clan, but he'd be furious if you leave this dimension to join Minato. The woman retorted with an unladylike snort, her smirk pointing directly at her friend. It's true that I love my brother, but Minato and Naruto are more important than him she assured. I don't really care if the council will prohibit me from returning here. The only thing I want, is to train my son properly. He needs to be more strong than any devil, fallen angel or even angels. The Grammary looked at Kashina with widened eyes, his own shock prevented him from talking anymore. Why she wanted to get that far in training Naruto Tan? Maybe because she was a proud devil, and also one of the most powerful? Sears X didn't really know about her purposes, but if she was really going with her son then he wouldn't be able to change her mind. The legend of the Bael child, so, are you really part from the Phoenix clan? Naruto kept his sight on the beautiful dandelions, his smile wavered slightly with the question. I am. My father is Minato Phoenix. Rias widened her eyes at that. She was four years old, like him, but the only thing she knew was that Kashina Bale was his mother. Maybe her brother omitted that the exiled devil was his father. Oh, sorry if I was rude. I didn't meant to be like that, 
I was just curious. Don't worry, I'll be seeing him next year so it doesn't really matter, Naruto explained diverting his eyes to look at the sky. There was a moment of silence that none of them dared to break, however, Rias's curiosity quickly forced her mouth to open, and it's true that your wings are of fire. What about immortality? And in. Naruto chuckled at her final stammering, Rias's cheeks blushing slightly at her own excitement. Well, I'm not supposed to reveal my powers to other devils until. Come on, please. The interruption came abruptly and he stopped with his mouth half opened. The boy noticed the pleading tone she used, as well as how big and beautiful her eyes turned to be. Her hands were intertwined, and she was very close of his face. Looking to both sides, Naruto sighed. Okay, I guess I won't have any trouble if you promise to keep the secret. Rias grinned with excitement, I promise it, now, would you show me your wings Naruto-san? The Phoenix raised an eyebrow as he stared into Rias's eyes. I never said I'd do something like that. In fact, the only one who had seen my wings is Kasen, Naruto explained, making the little girl pout in disappointment. But I do have the manipulation of fire like other members of the Phoenix clan. There are, however, a lot of powers that my mum wants to test if I've them inside me. One of them, and most important, is the power of destruction that both my and your mother have. How do you know that? Right then Rias's face showed only pure surprise by what he said. Naruto laughed and scratched the back of his head awkwardly, Kasen told me that a few months ago, when we were having dinner with Lord Bayo. There was a pinch of despise in his voice, and the way his expression turned grim in an instant showed exactly that. But that's great, I mean, she said that a child of a Bale's member can have that ability too. Rias giggled at his enthusiasm, Onisama said exactly the same than Kashina-sama. It's weird. But I'd really want to try that power if I've got the chance. Even if you could, you won't be as powerful as me. I mean, I'll train so hard that even the four great Satans will be nothing against me. Both of them looked at each other, their eyes filling with a defiant brightness. Oh really? How about we place a bet? Rias proposed looking over her shoulder to see if her brother was listening. If you're more powerful than me, then I'll marry you. On the contrary, if my own strength obliterates you then you'll be part of my peerage. Naruto, for the first time of the day, had to shut his mouth up to think about it. The conditions weren't so bad, apart from the fact that he was too young and didn't know what marrying a woman was. But, if Rias took that as a condition, then it had to be something good right? Grinning, the boy stood up suddenly and helped the little girl to stand as well. Then, looking at each other, they shake their hands. Deal. When I come back from my exile we'll have a battle to show our abilities. Rias nodded in agreement. The way of dealing it wasn't really clever, but she was fine with it. Oh, Naruto. You're going to regret this, and he did. One year later, Naruto and his mother left the Devils' dimension and traveled to Minato's new home. They found a strange world, filled with strange yet powerful humans who were called, Shinobis. It took Naruto by El Fenix almost 11 years to complete his exile. But, after living in that place, he wasn't the same anymore. The Fourth Shinobi World War a conflict that showed to be most devastating than the other's three in just one day. It began with Obito Uchiha, named himself as Madara, who appeared in the cage's first meeting. He asked them to deliver him the two biju left, but the cages rejected his demand and the Uchiha declared the war. With the large forces that Akatsuki had as well as the Edo Tensai from Kabuto Yakushi, the war should have lasted at least two months. It would be the most logical fact, since the allied shinobi forces had an army composed of, approximately, 80,000 shinobi and samurai who agreed to fight by their side. So, their sides were pretty leveled. However, it didn't last more than one day. The hero who saved the world was Naruto Bael Fenix, son of Minato Fenix and Kashina Bael. Though, the only thing he used was pure taijutsu and toad senjutsu. How he managed to avoid showing his heritage was a mystery that only his parents knew. In fact, Kashina had prohibited him to reveal either his wings, fire and wind abilities or his newly manifested power of destruction. Due to that, their clan's training was a secret very well hidden. His father trained him with his Fenig skills and also he taught him a few things of the ninja world. But, during their training, Minato explained to Naruto that he wouldn't be able to use his chakra as any other ninja since devils used magic instead of ki. There wasn't much difference between both powers 
but being born with the affinity of magic was a weakness in that dimension. He had limitations, as well as his father, and he had to rely more in hand-to-hand -hand combat than in jutsu. On the other hand, Kashina Bael refused to learn anything from her husband. Not that she had any problem with him, but she was more powerful than any shinobi of that world. However, she didn't participate in the war because it wasn't her homeworld. It did has problems, though Kashina just went to it to be with her son. In that moment, however, Naruto was standing next to the lifeless corpse of Obito Uchiha. The sight was hopeless, since the majority of the shinobi forces had been killed in action. So, it's finally over, E.H. Naruto? The voice of his best friend, Sasuke Uchiha, came from behind him. The phoenix sighed in resignation before answering, Don't tell me that you're going to fight me like we planned a few years ago. If I'm honest, I'm sick of fighting. So am I? Sasuke retorted, his throat expelling a dry snort. I'm not planning in kicking your ass, Dobi. At least not anymore. There was a sudden shout of joy, which caused both teens to turn to the source of the sound. Their eyes narrowed at the sight of Sakura Haruno and Kakashi Hitaki walking at them, the entire shinobi forces going right behind them. Sasuke kun, Naruto. Surprisingly, even the blonde rolled his eyes at the sight of the entire army approaching. Not that he hated her, but he was really tired to pretend being happy and hyperactive. In the end, it didn't really matter. Teme, where's the Kayubi? I know the other biju had escaped when I broke their prison, but he said he wanted to talk with me. Sasuke tilted his head to the side, revealing his Mangekio Sharingan to the blonde. With a smirk, he answered. He's trapped in the Kamui's dimension, as well as your parents. They asked me to teleport you there, that they had something really important to tell you. Naruto nodded quickly, his arms crossing over his chest in relief. At least, he will find some peace in that place. His parents might had something to speak with him, but he preferred that instead of being praised by the allied shinobi forces, do it. In an instant, the young demon disappeared in a vortex of Sasuke. Then, just a few seconds after, Kakashi and Sakura arrived. Sasuke kun. You did it, you defeated Obito. The Uchiha remained silent, his expression was filled with curiosity and realization. Naruto assisted you, didn't he? We saw him standing next to Obito. Sasuke looked at Kakashi out of the corner of his eyes. He killed Obito Uchiha, not me. In fact, Sakura, Naruto is the one you should thank for doing it. Both members of Team 7 gasped at that statement, Sakura widening her green eyes with surprise. But but where's he now? We won't see Naruto again, but he turned out to be an interesting person. Sasuke explained as he looked at the horizon with a nostalgic smile. Indeed, he was really interesting. The legend of the Bael child, this is where you had been all this time. I must admit, I wasn't expecting any favor from the Uchiha. Minato sighed, leaning his back against a wall of the place. Nor do I but you have to understand, he was the only one who could give us extreme privacy. The people of this world can't learn that we are devils. Naruto looked at his father in disbelief, his own blue eyes focusing in Minato's own. The old leader of the Phoenix clan resembled a lot of his son appearance, and even their eyes were the same. The only differences were the form of their faces and how they were dressed in the moment. What do you mean by? But he interrupted himself as he noticed who was behind his Tucson. A soft laugh escaped from the lips, oh, I get it. So the Kayubi is here too. Indeed, the most powerful biju was sitting beside his father. It was magnificent, with a scary look that showed lots of aggression and power. That fox was a demon, a devil kitsune, who had much more chakra than him. Kurama is here because I called him. The voice of Kashina broke the two fenigs out of their days. In a second, the beautiful figure of Kashina Bael emerged from behind the smirking Kayubi. She was smiling, her violet eyes looking at Naruto with deep care. Kasen, how do you know him? Kashina looked at Kurama for a second, before giggling slightly. It's a long story Sochi, and you two will have much time to talk about that. Naruto narrowed his eyes in confusion. Wait. Are you planning to turn me in the Kayubi's Jinchuriki? Nope, that won't be necessary, Minato announced, attracting the attention of the others. You see, you've the age and power to be categorized as a high-level devil. In the standards of both clans, Phoenix and Bael, you are now able to have a peerage. There was a momentary silence, followed by a gasp of shock. Obviously, Naruto Bael Phoenix was astonished. 
Of course that he was strong, his mother told him that, but having a peerage, that was unexpected, but also a nice surprise. I, I don't know what to said. Minato gazed at his wife and both shared a momentary smile, then it was gone. Consider it like our last gift for you, since you'll be returning home alone. The previous gratitude in Naruto's face was replaced by confusion and sadness. His mouth opened to ask the question that was really obvious, but his mind forced the answer to respond his doubts. And, instead of asking, why, he swallowed hard. I understand. I guess that the Kayubi will be part of my peerage, right? That's right kid, but I'd prefer that you call me by my name. This time, the eyes of the boy diverted to Kurama who talked for the first time of the day. Even so, I wasn't expecting that kind of petition from Kashina-sama. But, due to the fact that you're her son, I'd be honored if you allow me to be your knight. Naruto looked at his parents with confusion, the previous sadness wavered a bit. I don't have any objections with the queue, Kurama being the first member of my peerage. And I can understand why him, and why Tucson has to stay here, but why you two Kasen? Kashina sighed, intertwining her hand with Minato's own. That's because I'm used to this she explained. In fact, I like this place. After living here for so many years my way of seeing it had changed. But, I guess I don't want Minato-kun to be alone here too. Thanks, the irony on Minato's tone passed unnoticed by his wife who smiled at him and kissed his cheek. Blushing, his lips curled into a sly smile. You know Naruto, my younger brother has three sons and one daughter. Due to that, the next heir is Razor Phoenix, your cousin. I see, then I'll have strong rivals to fight for the right of leading our clan, Naruto noted, putting a hand under his chin. I'd have to investigate about Syroord when I get there, he could have turned into a powerful devil. Kashina took the opportunity to nod in agreement, her own curiosity being fueled by the fact that they were separated from that dimension. That's a good idea, considering that he's my brother's only son, however, don't forget about Rias, she may be a good challenge too. Naruto contemplated what his mother said for a few seconds, ignoring that his father made a hand seal. In an instant, a black box appeared on his hands. Here, take it. These are the devil pieces, which consists in a set of 15 chess pieces. It's really simple, just take a particular piece and use it with the target you wanted to turn part of your peerage. However, this only works if the other person wants it too. The blonde nodded at his father explanation, his hands moving out to grab the strange box. Opening it, he found exactly what his dad said he would. Kurama, mind if I try this on you? No, go ahead, Kurama answered, placing his head on the ground. The devil teen smiled at his parents, happy with the responsibility they gave to him. Receiving a smile from both of them, he walked to the Kayubi with the box on his hands. It didn't take him more than a few seconds to reach the biju, and his blue eyes stared directly into Red Pool of Calm Power. From now on, Naruto announced grabbing the night piece from inside the box. You'll be part of my peerage, Kurama. The fox closed his eyes just in the same moment the piece touched his head. Immediately, there was a dark and red glow and it began to enter inside his body. Kayubi found himself changing inside the light, his body shrinked and his fur began to disappear. Soon enough, the change was complete. In the previous place where a giant kitsune had been, there was now a young man standing with a hand in his pocket. He had short fair red hair, which was messy and gave him a wild look, as well as Naruto. The Kayubi had six whisker marks on his face but more pronounced. Also, he had two fox ears on top of his head and the same eyes from before. He was dressed with a red and elegant kimono, whose obi was black and had a blue katana on the right side of his hip. On his shoes, however, he was using a pair of blue sandals. However, his appearance wasn't the only thing that had changed. Immediately, when he saw Naruto, he walked until he was in front of him. Naruto-sama. His voice was really strong yet it possessed pure respect. But suddenly, he knelt in one knee. I am at your service. As your knight, I swear to fight by your side until you die. Naruto raised an eyebrow, the confusion attempted to take his mind, but, luckily for him, it didn't. Thanks, I guess, he said, turning his head to the left to face his amused parents. Did that piece washed his mind or something like that? On the very contrary son. Kurama-san has just realized how powerful you're due to the influence of the night piece. He's acting by pure will and nothing else. Minato explained, inwardly smirking. 
Kashina let Minato's hand go to walk to her son. The Kayubi was still kneeling in one knee and Naruto held the box in his hands. Naruto, her voice broke both of them out of their daze, forcing them to look at her. There's one thing I've to do before you go. Naruto nodded, noticing that his father was grinning sheepishly. Take care of yourself, Naruto and try to stick to your Fenix surname. If anybody learns that you're from the Bael clan then Lord Bael might find you before his time. The man said scratching the back of his head. With this piece. Kashina grabbed the only king piece and held it in front of Naruto's face. You'll become a leader, my son. Soon, the piece was inside of Naruto's body but he was nowhere to be seen. The legend of the Bael child, ah, I want to touch some nice tits. Matsuda raised his fist into the air, amen for that. Motohama, instead of being excited by the idea, just adjusted his glasses. Don't say that, it makes me feel stupid. There was a calm silence after his sentence, that nobody wanted to break. The pervert trio, as the others called them, were lying in the grass that was located in front of the gym class. Even if their first desire consisted on looking at the bodies of the girls, they found that, eventually, the sky had better aspect. At least, that was what Hyodo Issei thought. Matsuda, Motohama, just as he spoke, Hyodo forced his body to sit on the grass. Why did we enroll ourselves in this school? His friends did the same than him, sitting on the grass. This used to be a girl's school, that only last year turned into co-ed, Matsuda explained looking at some women running through the field with a smirk. That means that we can be popular, and have lots of good opai adventures. In other words, Issei and his friends finally stood up, every one of them adopted a different position, a harem. Motohama took the chance to finally speak, or that was our objective but we haven't got a girlfriend yet and it's our second spring here. That's true, Hiodo said as the three of them followed with their eyes the movement of the assets of the girls running near them but we still have a. Several screams of excitement interrupted him, his sight revealed that Kiba Yuto was approaching to a group of fangirls. Kiba was one of the most desired young men in Kuo Academy, he had short blonde hair, gray eyes and a mole under his left eye. He wore the boys school uniform, which consisted of a black blazer with white accents over a white, long sleeved dress shirt with a black ribbon on the collar, matching black pants, and brown dress shoes. He seemed to possess a shining aura around his face that attracted all the attention from the girls of the school. Yeah, handsome my ass, Issei thought as he saw with despise as three girls ran to the Yudo guy, Kiba Kun. The shout of one of them made him stop. Turning around, he faced his admirers with a smile. Would you like to come with us to the karaoke? Kiba's teeth shined with the sunlight, his eyes looking at the new girl who asked him on a date. Goman, but now I was heading too. Something interrupted him from saying any other word, his smile vanished in just an instant. Issei, his friends and the girls looked at him in confusion and slowly followed his line of vision. What everybody saw next caused different reactions on them. In the distance, a few meters from Kiba, two young men dressed in the school uniform were walking at them. One was a blonde teen who ported an air of elegance and distinction, his hair was spiky and he had six whisker marks on his face. The second was very different from the first, with short red hair and the more pronounced whisker marks on his masculine face. As well as the blonde guy, he wore the uniform of the school but his appearance was more rude. However, for the girl's opinion, both of them were really handsome. Their cheeks blushed as they continued to walk at them, their hearts pounded fast in their chests. Issei, Matsuda and Motohama were a different case. Hiodo was slightly surprised of their appearance but he also shared his friend's jealousy, two new rivals for them. Kiba was nervous, the power that both devils emanate was incredible, and the red-headed guy seemed to hide his true appearance under some sort of illusion, which made him look normal. He didn't know who they were, but he was going to let the bucko to find it out. Walking past the girls, Yuto stopped in front of both students. The closer impression revealed to him that they were new students. Hey, could you please move out of the way? We haven't finished our inspection of the school. The deep stare of the redheaded made him grow uncomfortable. However, the only thing he wanted was to know their names. Then, he would invite them to his club to talk with his king. Sorry, I just wanted to welcome you to this academy. I noticed that you must be new, don't you? The blonde guy raised an eyebrow at Kiba's level of intelligence, such that skill in a devil was dangerous. Maybe. Who are you? 
Kiba blinked at what the redhead said, then he put a hand on his forehead for a second. Please, forgive my manners. My name is Kiba Yuto, Class 2C. He gave them a deep bow, expecting them to introduce themselves. However, they didn't. And you are. I'm Kurama, and he's Naruto. We're in Class 2C as well, for so many reason that Kiba unnoticed he avoided giving any surname. But why? What are they reasons? He thought smiling calmly at them. It's a pleasure, Kiba affirmed, trying to get the value to propose what he was going to offer to them. I'm part of the occult research club, why don't you two come after classes? My president wants to know both of you. Naruto nodded with his head, his lips didn't spoke a single word to the young devil. We might go. But now, we'll have to keep touring this place. Kiba bowed slightly, and apologized to them before leaving. The three girls, previously ignored, stood a few meters from both guys. However, the phoenix and his knight walked forward not wanting to waste a second more. Their eyes eventually took notice of the nervous girls looking at them, and Naruto couldn't help but smile. Ladies. For the first time, Issei and his friends listened to his voice. They had been listening the entire conversation with pure jealousy, their minds were beginning to think that they were another rivals. However, neither Naruto nor Kurama stopped there and continued their walking. Suddenly, Naruto's eyes diverted to where Hiodo was and he stopped immediately. Of course, the fact that Issei had a sacred gear caught both his and Kurama's attention. Look, which do you think his sacred gear is? The Kayubi gazed at the perverted trio with amusement, interesting, boosted gear, I didn't really expect it to found it attached to a pervert. Naruto smiled slightly, nodding at the boy before resuming his walk. Kurama, you can't judge a book just by the front. The Kayubi quickly found the logic behind his king's words and made a slight bow. In fact, I think that his apparent perversion reminds me of Jiraiya Sensei. Issei looked at both students until they were out of his sight. Scowling, he turned to his friends and nodded realizing that it was time to peep in the girls' dresser room. Of course he was confused with the blonde's attitude, but he paid no mind. Opais were first. The legend of the Bael clan. Hiodo Issei fell to the ground as his friends escaped from the imminent danger. Damn, Matsuda, Moto. His mouth stopped midway, his eyes widening at the hopeless sight he was having. He was alone, and soon he was surrounded by a group of girls carrying Shinai on their hands. You, again. The teen, still sitting on the ground, swallowed sonorously. His head sweating from the nerves and fear he was having right then. W wait. But the girls were too annoyed and angry to be clement. With only one scream, Issei shut his eyes and waited for the first impact to came. A sound was heard after a second, but the pain never appeared. Confused, the pervert opened his eyes and found that the redhead from before had stopped the impact with his hand. His strength was noticeable, and even a crack could be heard in the silence produced by the shock of the girls. Naruto suddenly appeared from Kurama's right side, putting a hand on the shinai that his knight was holding. Such a high level of violence is not good, don't you think? The entire group blushed when they noticed how handsome both of them were, but they didn't answer instantly. I know that you all are a group of highly intelligent ladies, why don't you forgive my friend? This will be the last time he do something like that, trust me. His polite speech caught the girls off guard, and they couldn't help but fell into his charms. The girl from before stopped from applying strength to the shinai, and Kurama let it escape from his hands. Oh okay. But if we see you again, not even he will save you, pervert. Issei nodded nervously, sighing in relief when all the girls were gone. He looked with more confusion at his saviors, noticing that they were indeed gazing at him with seriousness. Were they going to kick his ass? You. What's your name? Kurama pointed at him, his eyes narrowing at the look of the brown haired guy. The boy was an average student, nothing remarkable about his messy short brown hair and amber eyes. He wore the same outfit that other students but he got the jacket open and showed a red t-shirt under it. Aise Hiodo. He answered nervously, the way he stood up so quickly showed the same than the way he talked. Come with us Issei, Naruto said motioning him to go with them. At first, the user of the sacred gear was nervous but soon he was following both through the academy. Naruto and Kurama walked through the outskirts, their eyes taking note of the large population of female students in the campus. It wasn't any surprise, because they already knew the story of Kuo before enrolling in there. However, they trip only lasted a few minutes. 
Naruto stopped suddenly in the garden of the occult research club, leaning his back against the wall next to a stairs. Kurama leaned against a tree, his arms crossed over his chest and he closed his eyes in thoughts. He was not so close to give them privacy, since Naruto had to explain the boy everything about devils. H hey, thanks for saving me, Issei finally said scratching the back of his head. The Phoenix teen looked at him with a sly smile, his blue eyes seemed to pierce through his soul. Ah, hey, uh, I'm sorry if. Naruto raised his hand in the air, stopping his new objective from saying anything else. You don't need to. In fact, I saved you because you remind me of a master I had when I was younger. R really? He was like me? Issei asked with some hope. If that guy, who seemed pretty cool, had a sensei similar to him then he had an opportunity to form a harem. The blonde chuckled slightly before answering, indeed he was. Perverts are very similar to each other you know. There was deception in Hyodo's expression, one that suddenly hit him like a bullet. I see, for some reason that a guy like Naruto had saved him just to laugh of him made him feel disappointed and sad. Don't worry, I do found perverts really funny, Naruto assured with a grin, the deception in Issei's face grew deeper. Hiyodo silently sighed in defeat, but when he was going to ask the blonde a question his eyes took notice of something red. It was hair, which belonged to a red-haired beautiful girl looking at them from a window. She appeared to be a young woman with light skin, blue-green eyes and a buxom figure. She was looking directly at Naruto, her big eyes filled with curiosity and interest. Her face showed no emotion, but the blonde noticed what she was experiencing. Karama. I think we came to the right place. Naruto-sama, is there anything wrong? The voice of his knight broke him out of his daze, his mind returned to the present. The phoenix looked at the red-headed team before turning his side to the ground. I'm sorry, I think I got lost on the past, Naruto said as they both continued to their destination. I was expecting to find Rias in this academy, but the day before I left returned to my mind. Kurama felt sympathy for his king, let me guess, she cried. The blonde nodded absently his eyes losing the poor concentration they had. He remembered every tear she dropped for him that day eleven years ago, and now he was feeling really bad for her. Well, I don't really know what she felt, but I assume that being a girl of five years old had to be difficult. Though, she must be happy to see you again. That's what bothers me. One year before my departure, we placed a bet. Now, we are destined to fight each other to decide who is more stronger, Naruto explained shaking his head slowly at the thought of fighting his old friend. Well, I guess I shouldn't have to worry about things like that, don't you think? His knight snorted loudly, his laugh echoed through the empty hall of the academy. Agreed. For now, let's focus on the present. After saying that, both fell into a comfortable silence. The fact was that they were heading to their first class, in where they will join that strange boy Kiba Yuto since they were in the same classroom. However, the previous events made Naruto grow a bit nervous. Rias, who looked at him when he and Issei were talking, just disappeared in the darkness of her club without giving him any word or expression. Though, what really annoyed Kurama was that the other two perverts came back just in that moment and glared furiously at his king. Then, they forced the Hyodo guy to leave with them. But luckily, Naruto had managed to put him a seal of track. That way, if any other being approached at him, he'd know. In the end, Naruto had to wait more to talk with Issei about devils. It was imperative for him, since he planned to make him part of his peerage as the only pawn. He knew that, due to boosted gear, he'll have to use all of his pawn pieces to turn Hyodo into a demon. Here we are Naruto-sama, will we really have to study? The phoenix couldn't help but chuckle at his knight's question, his lips curling into a sly grin. Does it really matter? He asked just as he knocked at the door of the class 2C. Come in. Both of them heard the voice of the male teacher and nodded at each other. Putting a smile on his face, Naruto opened the door and entered the classroom. Kurama walked silently behind him. Excuse me, we're the new students. There was realization on the man's face, lips curling into a gentle smile. Ah yes. Class, these are going to be your new classmates. The young man announced, turning his head from his class to the two teenagers. Please, introduce yourselves to them. The Kayubi nodded at his new sensei, his red eyes looking with curiosity at everybody in the classroom. He noticed the blush on the girls' faces, and even the scowl from some males. However, 
He also realized that Kiba Yuto was looking at them with a fake smile. My name's is Kurama Uzumaki. And that's what all he said. Everyone blinked in confusion, not only for the short introduction but also for his constant seriousness. Naruto, however, was pleased with the false surname he gave to everyone. Nobody noticed it, of course, and even Kiba seemed to be in thoughts. I'm Naruto Namikaze, I like training, reading books and helping people. After being forced to fight for many years, I started to dislike conflicts and battles. I prefer a more peaceful solution if possible, his charismatic speech caught immediately the attention of the blushed girls who sighed with tenderness. Finally, I think that perverts are really funny. That last part ruined the ambit of admiration that the class had of him. Not that the girls started to look at him with despise or something like that, but they did get more confused. Even so, he didn't look like a pervert. Okay, well, thanks for sharing that with us. I hope that you'll get to know each other in no time. Trust me, this school is really friendly. Kurama resisted the urge to snort and, instead, bowed his head slightly. Naruto nodded at the man, heading for a chair between the other girls. When he sat down, the teacher had to start the class to prevent the girls from talking to the new guy. The Kayubi, however, looked around and found a chair next to Kiba. With a smirk, he sat down and grinned mischievously at the blonde team. That devil had fallen completely into their trap, and for now Yudo didn't know their real identities. The legend of the Bale child. That man. The whisper didn't pass unnoticed for the other girl, who turned her head to her bucho. Excuse me. Rias crossed her arms under her chest, her eyes stared at the chessboard. The one who was looking at the window. Akino Himahima blinked in confusion, the realization hit her almost immediately. He's from the class 2B. I'm sure that Hyodo Issei was his name. What about him? I'm not talking about him, the Grimori said, putting a hand under her chin. She had to plan her next movement pretty well if she wanted to win. Didn't you notice who was there? The beautiful queen nodded slowly, her eyes diverting from her king to the window. Hi, he must be a new student, since I never saw him before, Akino explained. Though, I must admit his power caught my attention. Not to mention that he's really handsome. Bucho, is he an acquaintance of yours? Rias silently bit her lower lip with expectation, that man, the boy who had been her best friend in the past had returned. And his level seemed to be really high. His name is Naruto Bale Phoenix, the son of Minato Phoenix and Kashina Bale. Akino gasped in shock at what she heard, her eyes widening slightly for a moment. But, almost immediately, a smirk appeared on his lips. Oh, that's something really interesting. Definitely he has my total attention now, the queen assured, giggling at some thoughts that she was having then. But thanks to her distraction, Rias turned the game to her favor. And, checkmate. Era, ignoring her queen's analysis of her defeat, she stood up from the couch. Then, approaching to a chair, she begun to undress herself. How many matches did I won up to now? Akino looked at Rias stoically, the sight of her being naked did nothing to disturb her calmness. No idea. I can't wait to play another one, the Grimori said, removing her underwear. Please, tell Kiba to bring him during lunch. I really want to talk with Naruto again. After saying that, the Bucho entered in the shower and closed the curtains. The hot water quickly stroked her naked figure, and her hands toward her body with lust. She blushed at the memory of promising marriage to Naruto Phoenix, though she didn't regret anything. Rias always fulfilled her promises. In the room, Akino was a bit taken aback with her words. Her mischievous mind playing against her. Naruto Bale Phoenix. Hum, she thought as a sly smirk appeared on her lips. Truly, he had caught her attention. But, however, they failed in noticing that Kurama was with Naruto. Oh well, more surprises for later. The legend of the Bale child. Lunch came really fast for Naruto, who didn't pay any attention to the class. However, the teacher noticed his lack of interest and begun to ask him some questions about his lessons. Unfortunately for the professor, the boy answered all of them perfectly. His lack of attention was complemented with his intelligence. However, neither he nor Kurama could eat their food in peace. In the moment the teacher left the room, the entire classroom surrounded them. Of course, all of the students that stood near them were girls. 
Naruto closed his bento, his eyes diverted from his knight to the group of girls in front of him. The Kyubi was standing next to his king, but he was a bit annoyed with the attention they were attracting to themselves. Please, can we let the questions for another time? We want to eat our lunks in private. Despite what the Kyubi was feeling, he managed to keep his calm. It was difficult though, since every girl has the same question for them and that was. Naruto-sama, Kurama-sama do any of you have, G.I. Gur girlfriend? Perhaps, in that moment, the worst choice would have been smile at them and saying that they didn't have. Though, that's exactly what Naruto did. No, we don't have a girlfriend. Every girl whispered in joy, their cheeks blushing with excitement. They had a chance. W would UG go out in A. Something interrupted the girl in point from saying something else. Kiba Yudo was the interruption, who stood in front of Naruto's desk. The blonde devil was sitting with his arms crossed over his chest, but his blue eyes were pointed in Kiba's smiling face. Yudo-san, may I help you? Sorry to interrupt your lunch, but Rias Bucho wants to talk with you. Now, there wasn't anger or a pinch of order in his voice. However, Naruto couldn't help but raise an eyebrow with interest. However, the entire class began to whisper about what Kiba said. Rias Oni-sama desiring to talk with Naruto-sama and Kurama-sama. Is she planning to make a harem? Kawaii, Kurama got tired of listening to the group of girls, and sighed in resignation. His eyes looking at his king for approval. He really wanted to leave that room, if not, he'd turn into a emo like Sasuke Uchiha. Naruto, on the other hand, was really looking forward to see his old friend again. He had seen her a few hours ago, and the sight resulted to be more than the expected. She had really became a beautiful girl. All right, we'll go with you Yudo-san. Rias-chan doesn't deserve to be waiting. The legend of the Bale child. The Phoenix and his knight walked through the door, their distance to Kiba showed their common sense of precaution. There was a stair next to a short hall, which ended in a lonely door. Following the young devil, both teens walked behind him as they ascended the stair. Kiba finished the ascension first, opening the main door in the second floor. Then, he stepped inside and stood next to the entrance, that way, he allowed a complete sight of the room for the visitors. When they reached the door, Kiba smiled. Please come in. Naruto silently nodded at the blonde boy as he and Kurama entered the club room. It was rather simple apart from the magic seal occupying the majority of the room. It had a pair of couches and a single desk facing the door. There was someone sitting in one of the couches, her petite figure stood out from the room. She was a girl of around 15 years of age with white hair and hazel eyes. At the front, her hair had two long bangs going past her shoulders and several loose bangs hanging over her forehead, while the back had a short bob cut. She also wore a black cat-shaped hair clip on both sides of her hair along with the Kuo Academy girls' school uniform, without the shoulder cape. Kurama noticed that she was different from the other girls they met before, since she didn't blush or showed an expression of excitement when they entered. Also, he saw the yokan she was eating and his mouth watered in desire. It was something natural though, since neither he nor Naruto ate their lunks. Kaniko, they are Naruto Namikaze and Kurama Uzumaki. Kiba introduced, seeing that no one of them wanted to say anything. The girl bowed her head slightly in apprehension, her hazel eyes looking at Kurama first and then at the king. Nice to meet you. There was a pinch of curiosity on her face that both noticed immediately. However, it was gone in a second. Naruto then looked at the desk in front of him but his eyes couldn't find Rias anywhere. Where was she? The Kyubi, however, stood put a hand on the boy's shoulder and approached his mouth to his ear. If anything happens, we'll defeat them, Naruto-sama. Phoenix frowned, his own excitement of having the possibility to talk with Rias found itself being replaced with doubts. He really didn't want to fight his old friend if possible. I hope this isn't a trap, he thought, noticing that his knight was standing next to him. It was a precaution though, if he noticed any sign of threat they would be ready to attack. So. You've returned after all. I thought you had forgot about me. Naruto immediately smiled as he heard the sweet yet mature voice of, who he interpreted to be, the Grimori lady. Rias Chan. His voice was soft and nostalgic, and he couldn't help but turn around to face her. How could I? I mean, we're still friends right? 
His eyes quickly took the sight of his old friend. Her appearance had changed drastically from when they were young, and she had grown in every aspect of her body and face. Indeed, she was like a goddess. She smiled with a flinch of mystery in her face, her legs moving towards the young Phoenix. Perhaps, that depends of your reasons to lie to Kiba-kun and Kaneko-chan. What do you mean by lie? Kiba suddenly asked, his body sitting next to Kaneko. Naruto looked at Rias first, her lips curled into a sly smirk. You're the same than eleven years ago, he sighed, nodding quickly to Kurama. All right, we did lie to you both. My true name is Naruto Bale Phoenix. Kiba widened his eyes at what he said, and Kaneko dropped the sweet she was eating. Yuto already knew that both of them were powerful, but a member from the Phoenix clan. That was more surprising, but Kurama only smirked in satisfaction, he never got tired of seeing the reaction of the devils about his king's legacy. Hey, I'm just Kurama, formerly known as the Kayubi no Yoko, Akitsune. Naruto-sama is my king. This time, even Rias widened her eyes at what he said. Kurama's smirk grew wider, but he didn't show his true form. His king didn't allow him to. On the other hand, the Grimori's peerage were shocked. Both Kaneko and Kiba astonished of what they heard from the red-headed man. Era, I'm interrupting something. The voice of her queen broke Rias out of her daze. She blinked in an effort to comprehend what he had just said, but her mind quickly forced her to react. Naruto-kun, Kurama-san, she's Akino Himahima. My queen. Both teens looked at the new member of the club that entered in the room. Akino was a beautiful girl and had a buxom figure like Rias, but her breasts seemed to be more bigger. She had very long black hair tied in a ponytail and violet eyes. Like most of the girls at the academy, she wore the customary Kuo Academy girls school uniform, along with black knee-high socks. It's a pleasure Himahima-san, Naruto said, bowing at the same time than Kurama did. Akino smirked slyly, her hands holding a tray with empty cups and a jug with tea. Era era, call me Akino. And, the pleasure is mine Naruto-kun. The way of talking to his king made Kurama scowl slightly at her, but he didn't say anything. The Phoenix, however, chuckled at her enthusiasm. Soon, the entire group was sitting on the couches. Kaneko next to Kiba and Akino next to Naruto. Kurama remained on his feet, Rhea sat behind her desk. Do you want some sugar with your tea, Naruto-kun? Akino suddenly asked, putting one spoonful of sugar when the boy raised one finger. Smiling, she gave him the cup. Thanks, he took a sip of the hot liquid, and smiled when it entered through his throat. Hmm, it's delicious. You'd be a good wife Akino-san. Kurama snorted silently, his eyes closing in thought as he could fell the stairs of Kaneko and Kiba on him. The beautiful girl put her hands on her cheeks and smiled in joy, era, arigato. However, Rias took the opportunity to clear her throat. Well Naruto-kun, how was your life? Did you learn something useful from the ninjas? All the stares were now on the Phoenix, the eyes looking at him with pure curiosity and interest. In fact, he took another sip from his tea and smiled. Chusen taught me how to use my chakra in ninjutsu and I also learned a lot of techniques. My master Jiraiya introduced me to the powerful toads in the Mount Myoboku. Rias Grimori smiled with curiosity, interesting. And they taught you senjutsu, right? Kurama took the opportunity to speak. Yeah, and he's really powerful now. You'll have to be careful if you're planning to fight him. Everyone went silent at that, even Naruto and his old friend seemed a bit nervous for that. The blonde looked at the Grimori beauty, her face showed real concern. However, his lips curled into a calm smile. It's okay Rias chan we don't have to do that. I mean, we can just forget it, we were kids after all and... No, a promise is a promise, Rias interrupted, standing from her chair to look better at him. And the way we sealed it before you left is a concrete proof of our determination. Surprisingly, Naruto blushed at that. Perhaps, the most surprised, was his knight. His king, blushing. What did they do in the past to put him so uncomfortable? You're right, but please let's not talk about that now. There will be time to fight La. Again, no, this has to be settled today, Rias, once again, interrupted him. But first, I want you to talk with me, in private. The Phoenix slowly nodded at the girl, 
letting the cup of tea in the table and standing up. Kurama attempted to follow him, but he shook his head. I'll be safe. Just keep your eyes on them. Kurama nodded, his smirk growing wider as he leaned his back against the door Naruto had just crossed. If they wanted to enter without his king's permission, they will have to pass over his dead body. The Legend of the Bale Child Both friends talked for hours, the stories of Naruto were getting more and more interesting. Oh really? And what did you do to save him? Naruto grinned, his hand scratched the back of his head. I didn't save him. In fact, I begun to shout that a pervert was peeping in the sauna. Then, a lot of women came screaming and Jiraiya sensei ran for his life. The girl giggled loudly, the thought of an old man running from a group of girls was really funny. You're so cruel haha. Don't misunderstand me, perverts are hilarious. But I was tired of him delaying my training to investigate for his next book, he explained, letting his mind wander through the old memory. She smiled in joy, her body moving more closer to Naruto until her chest was pressed on his chest. I've missed you so much. R. Rias Chan, what are you doing? Why you're, are really close, the Phoenix said, noticing how big her eyes seemed to be. However, the Grimori didn't move an inch from him. Instead, her arms went behind his back and put him in a tight hug. Oh Naruto-kun, don't you remember we shared something more intimate than this? You shouldn't feel uncomfortable, she put her head on his chest and closed her eyes in nostalgia. Naruto sighed in defeat, moving his arms to return the hug. That was different, and I was different too, he explained, stroking his long crimson hair. After seeing so much death my mind forced me to be more mature. Rias Chan, I'm still your friend but I don't think that what happened in the past should affect you. Rias suddenly pulled out from the hug, her body moved to the window of the empty room. You don't get, don't you? It's not what we did when we were young, it's about the bet. I always fulfill my promises no matter the cost. The Phoenix crossed his arms over his chest, his look turned worried for a reason. Rias. I'm not also more older, but my power has increased too. I don't want to fight you but I'm not willing to let you win that bet, he assured, noticing that the sunlight highlighted her figure. I've a peerage now, and I'll lose everything if you win. She giggled again, but it hit at a tone of malice. Then I'm sorry, but we are going to fight. And it will be tonight, you won't escape from me. Naruto rubbed his chin in thoughts, his mind noticing that he had no excuse to prolong it. He didn't want to fight, but Rias didn't let him any choice. Just in that moment, the seal that he had put on Issei activated itself. The Phoenix's hand glowed and the mark of the Bale clan appeared on his palm. Damn, Kurama. Immediately, the Kyubi entered inside the room. His hands were curled into fists, his energy begun to flare due to the apparent threat. Naruto-sama, what's wrong? Issei has made contact with a fallen angel, we'll have to go. The blonde explained as he looked at Rias with a sneaky smile. Sorry Rias Chan but our fight will have to wait. Rias opened her mouth to discuss but both Naruto and Kurama disappeared in a black and blue circle. Just in that moment, Akino and the others entered in the empty room. Bucho, what happened? They, have escaped, the legend of the Bale child. It had passed some time since Yuma Amano confessed to Issei, who was more than astonished when that happened. They had been out in a date, Issei showed a nervous side and cared deeply for her. He did everything he could to make the date perfect and, in the end, he thought she was happy with his efforts. Oh boy he was really wrong. In the end of their day, the girl took him to a fountain and stopped in front of him. Her smile was calm and lovely, or so it appeared to be. But, however, when Issei thought she was going to kiss him she only asked if he could die for her. At that moment, her true appearance was revealed to him. A pair of black wings with big feathers emerged from her back, her face turned grim and malefic. Hyodo was astonished, his pure shock prevented him from stopping the incoming attack of light the girl sent against him. A spear of light pierced his body, lots of blood poured from the wound. Sorry, but you were a threat for us, the voice of Yuma hit his numb ears. If you want to hold a grudge for someone, then hate the god who placed that sacred gear inside your body. Issei heard what she said and silently gritted his teeth with pain. He caught the sound of the step getting away from him and he noticed that he was dying alone in that park. Raising a hand in front of his face, 
he saw his own blood adorning it. It's red, like her, he thought, his mind losing consciousness slowly. Damn man, if I knew I was going to die at least I'd had touched her tits, haha, ha, even in the end I like to be a pervert. His vision suddenly became blurry, his eyes begun to close and his body relaxing on the cool ground. If I had the chance I'd like to be the boyfriend of Rias Gramori. However, he wasn't going to die that night. Someone appeared in the darkness next to him, his eyes couldn't register who it was. But it possessed blonde hair. Sorry Issei, but Rias won't be your savior. I'll keep you alive, but you are going to serve me. Despite the situation, Hyodo couldn't help but feel surprised as he recognized the voice. N Naruto san. And with those words, his mind finally shut down. Naruto sighed as he sat at the table, his hands grabbed the pair of chopsticks. Kurama, how many days had passed? The Kyubi appeared from the kitchen, his red kimono swaying slightly with each movement. Quite a few. Why, is it time for us to return? His king didn't answer and, instead, he began to eat his breakfast. It had passed many days since Issei reincarnated as a devil and neither Naruto nor Kurama assisted to the academy. They had many reasons for doing that, but one of them was to avoid contact with Rias and her peerage. Why? Because now she would be looking for the blonde to fight him. Not that he was scared or worried, but if he were to fight he wanted his new pawn to be present. Many would question his choices, though he was using his intelligence. When a human reincarnated as a devil, the first changes appear during the first days. For that purpose, Issei would be feeling different during nights, more powerful, faster and even he would have the ability to see clearly in dark ambience. Due to that, Naruto knew that it would be easier to believe if Hyoto witnessed a real fight. And experiencing changes in his body was a plus concerning to further explanations. Perhaps, but if I lose, what would you do? That question took Kurama off guard, but he managed to answer it quickly. Naruto-sama, I've full faith in you. Even if you were to lose, I'd stay by your side. The Phoenix smiled and nodded, that would mean joining Rias Peerage. Kurama didn't retort, his body stood stoically as he watched how his king ate his homemade breakfast. Well, I guess she won't be easy to defeat. After all, she's part of the Bale clan as well. Kayubi lowered his head slightly, a snort came out from his throat. Please, are you really afraid of Grimori's powers? You're a Phoenix. You've the power of destruction within you. I'm absolutely sure that she won't be as strong as you. You misunderstand me. Naruto started to speak, standing from his chair. I'm not scared for a simple fight or by how powerful she might be. The fact is that I don't want to force her to marry me if I win. Now Kurama forced his mouth to close, his lips trembling with repentance. His body lowered deeply in a bow, forgive me, Naruto-sama. Naruto chuckled slightly, his hands moving to grab his car's key. However, when he was midway, he stopped. Nah, we're not going to school today, he assured, getting a nod from his knight. We'll just watch him, I've the feeling that something is going to happen to him. The legend of the Bale child. HMPH, I see, so you have no master, the fallen angel said, standing in front of Issei with his wings extended. Then there won't be any problem if I kill you. Beings like you shouldn't exist. Hyodo opened his mouth to ask, but no words got out. Instead, his eyes widened when the enemy raised his hand and a spear of yellow light appeared on his palm. A loud sound of something being activated could be heard then, and Issei fell to the ground as he saw the smirk on the man's lips. How has that happened, and why? Since that strange dream when Naruto appeared and spoke to him he had been feeling different. During nights, his own speed was amazing and even after running entire hours he wasn't even agitated. However, his magnificent new abilities wavered during the day. He felt terribly weak when exposed to sunlight, and not even his mind could think clearly. Issei didn't realize why he was experimenting those changes, but he thought it was part of his growth. And there he was, sitting on the ground gazing at the freak who was going to end his life with a spear of light. Of course he didn't know that, in fact he know nothing about the world he was now part of. T the same happened with Yuma Chan. Is this my end? Issei thought, closing his eyes as he noticed that the man's arm was moving backwards. Hey, I knew this wasn't a dream. 
Just as his mind stopped his flow of thoughts, a loud thud hit his ears. Surprisingly, after a few seconds, he felt no pain. With his eyes still closed, he moved his hands to touch the spear before it disappeared from his wound, but there was nothing. Shocked, he finally opened his eyes and gasped at the sight. In front of him was a blonde teen with spiky hair, his right hand held the golden spear with ease. Looking more closely, Issei noticed that the weapon was burning his palm. A thin column of smoke emerged from the contact between the teen's hand and the spear. However, after a few seconds, he destroyed the spear just by clenching it. Don't you dare touch him, the teen said, gritting his teeth with noticeable pain. Who the fuck are you? The fallen angel asked as he widened his eyes at the previous show of power. Blonde hair, blue eyes, your power tells much about you, but at the same time it doesn't say anything. Naruto snorted loudly, his laugh full of despise. Of course you don't know about me. My name is Naruto Bale Phoenix. Just as he said that both Issei and the man gasped in shock, Hyodo because of the realization of seeing his savior there. The fallen angel, however, felt that his body begun to tremble under the new revelation. W what? B but M my superiors said that you and your parents were dead. Who said that they are dead? Naruto said, smirking at the sight of his nervous opponent. I've just returned to this place and I found a stupid fallen angel messing with my pawn. Do you really wish to fight against a devil? The fallen angel gasped in terror, the son of Minato Phoenix and Kashina Bale, two of the most powerful demons in the underworld, was standing in front of him. His power was something to be considered as terrifying, and he couldn't help but smile nervously. Foo foo foo, this is really interesting. I've never expected to found a high level demon around this place. The man made a deep bow as he continued to introduce himself. My name's Donasiege, I hope we don't met each other again. After saying that, his large black wings were extended and he flew into the darkness of the night. One thought was on his mind and that repeated itself as he escaped from the place, I've to inform this to Azazel. Back to both devils, Issei couldn't find the valor to stand up. The previous revelations showed that they were related with the changes he was experiencing. Who was that man with the wings on his back? Was he really a fallen angel? Was he scared with Naruto's apparent surname? Why they thought he and his parents were dead? And was the blonde a powerful guy? Many questions for someone who had been just reincarnated as a devil, but it was comprehensible though. Hyodo's mind had just begun to believe that the other day with Yuma wasn't a dream like he thought. Issei. Ay ah hi. The boy shouted as he stood in a blur noticing that Naruto was looking at him now. The blonde held his right wrist with his other hand, are you okay? Issei gazed at him with disbelief, his sight taking notice of the new aspect of him. Unlike before, when he saw him with the academy's uniform, Naruto was now wearing a black jacket which was opened and showed a white shirt under it. The sleeves were pulled up just to below his elbows, and a necklace with a green gem could be seen around his neck. He also wore dark blue jeans, a brown belt and a pair of black shoes. However, when he blinked, Hyodo realized that he was expecting an answer and nodded. Naruto-san, why that guy wanted to kill me? Is this a dream like the one in where Yuma-chan killed me? The Phoenix gritted his teeth with pain, the previous effect had not passed yet. Sorry if this disappoints you, but no, this is real like the air we breathe. I've saved you in both occasions, the first time when Yuma Amano attacked you. What? How do you know her? Issei asked in shock, his memories of that fateful day returning to his mind. Everybody who saw Yuma Chan say that she doesn't exist. I had many proof, like a photo of her in my phone and her number. But they weren't there anymore. A sound of steps came from behind Naruto and Hyodo couldn't help but fear the worst. However, the new person showed to be Kurama. Oh she exists, that's for sure, he assured as he tossed a photography of both of them to Issei. Her real name is Rainer, and is a fallen angel. Issei looked in shock as he saw him and you know, Rainer, laughing together. This is. Suddenly, a loud thud could be heard. Hyodo stopped midway, his mouth closed quickly as his eyes lost every sign of consciousness. In a second, he was lying on the ground. Era era, I think I've exceeded in my strength. Kurama growled as he noticed the figure of the beautiful Queen of Rhea standing a few meters from them, her buxom body highlighted under the moonlight. 
She was now wearing a traditional Miko attire, consisting of a white haori with red accents, a red hakama, and a pair of zori with white tabi. What are you doing here? Don't you see that we were in a meeting? Unfortunately for him, Akino seemed to be ignoring him completely. Hum, he looks really good, she thought as her violet eyes were looking directly into the phoenix's own. Oh, your hand has been hurt, she suddenly exclaimed, putting a hand on her mouth to cover her sly smirk. Akino san, I don't really understand why Rias has sent you to spy me. And, at least, you should have waited until I finished explaining everything to Issei, the teen said, frowning at the look of lust in her face. The queen smirked at him, oh, who said that Bucho sent me? I was just looking for you Naruto-kun. Kurama felt more annoyed as he heard that, but what she did after made both blush. The Kyubi in embarrassment and Naruto, well, let's say he was embarrassed too. The queen had walked to him, her hands immediately took Naruto's wounded palm and put it on her left breast. He could feel the extremely soft skin thanks to Akino's movements, and his palm was now under the cleavage of the Miko attire she was wearing. Flushing, Naruto felt an immediately relief coming to his wound. W.Y., I'm a Phoenix, that means that I only needed more time to pour one of my tears on my wound. Himahima giggled lustfully for a second, licking her lower lip with her tongue. Era, I don't know, my body acted on his own, she said, almost giggling again as she saw Naruto's nervous blush. But you really seem tired from the previous fight, maybe you need more of my powers to heal fully. The Kyubi, recovering from the previous surprise, snorted loudly his attempts to call the attention again ignored by Akino. Search another excuse to fuck with Naruto-sama, because he's in perfect condition. Besides, he doesn't need you or Rias to heal his body. His own power is enough. Naruto grew more uncomfortable at the mention of having sex with Akino, but he didn't complain about it either. He wasn't a pervert, but he did like the feeling of her tits. However, he needed to act fast, Issei was unconscious and he'd have to carry him to his home. Akino-san, I really need to take Issei to his room. I promise I'll visit Rias-chan tomorrow, but for now. He was interrupted, however, when the girl pushed her breast on his chest. Naruto's hand was still over her skin, but he couldn't stop the incoming erection that was beginning to rise. Era era, thinking in Bucho already. Do you really want to marry her? She asked as her other hand moved over his left cheek. Or, maybe you're afraid that you won't be as good as she expects in bed. I can help you with that if you want. Her hot breath hit his ear, the face of Akino was really close to his left cheek. No, I've to stop this before I lost control, he thought, closing his eyes to concentrate his chakra. In a moment, he wasn't near her anymore. He had disappeared from her sight, but she found out that his new position was next to Issei. Oh, is that one of your special abilities? Kurama grinned with satisfaction, it's a basic ninjutsu. But I assure you that his arsenal is more than enough to defeat your king. Akino, instead of feeling disappointed or shocked, smirked. Era era, looks like Naruto-kun is a box of surprises, she said, looking at the phoenix with renewed interest. Oh well, I've to go now. But don't be late tomorrow, Bucho will be waiting for you. With a wink, the beautiful woman summoned a magic circle and disappeared through it. Naruto sighed in relief, his eyes diverting to his knight. Phew, that was a close one. Anyway, why did you had to lie? We both know that my chakra level is lower than a simple chunin. The Kyubi nodded seriously, hi, but don't you remember what the ninja said about the art of deception? There was an expression of realization in Naruto's face who couldn't help but smile in surprise. Very smart. Good, we're taking Issei to his home. I've seen it before so it won't cost us a lot of time to find it. Kurama nodded, tossing Issei behind his back. In a second, the blonde summoned a black and blue circle under his feet. One blink, and both were gone. The legend of the Bale Child. Wake up or I'll kill you. Wake up, or you'll be cut into small pieces. Issei lazily extended his hand and turned off his Tsunere alarm, his mind slowly begun to remember the previous events. He thought that it was a dream, a very real one. However, this time, nobody he hasn't died in it thanks to Naruto and Kurama appearing to talk with him about Yuma Amano. Maybe that was a sign of something to come. That could be an answer, 
but why both teens were in his dream then. Yawning, Hyodo sat on his bed and rubbed his closed eyes. Then, standing up, he went to the door but he stopped midway as a voice called him from behind. Hey, open your eyes Pong. Immediately, Issei froze up. His eyes shot open and his heart thudded once. Turning around, he gasped in shock. There, with his back leaned against the window of the room, was the red-headed teen. WWH what? K. Karama San. The Kayubi snorted silently, hmm. Finally, I thought I was going to die of boredom here. Hyodo didn't move an inch, his mind trying to interpret why that guy was in his room. And no way, A or Y U G G, he began asking, but he stopped midway as he noticed the look of pure hate that Kurama was sending to him. Don't be stupid kid, I've just arrived an hour ago. Now, do me a favor and shut up. Issei immediately nodded, his mouth almost let a sigh out in relief. Good, listen, what happened yesterday wasn't a dream. That fallen angel, the imminent danger, everything was real. Issei gasped once again, his eyes widened in shock. I it was, B but I remember that we were talking and then I lost consciousness. Kurama recognized the tone of disbelief in the boy's tone and sighed. He wanted proof, then he'll have some. We were explaining to you that Yuma Amano was in fact a fallen angel called Rainer who wanted to destroy you. I showed you a picture of your first date, and when Naruto-sama was going to tell you the truth, someone hit you in your neck. Why yeah, that's exactly what I remember, Hyodo exclaimed, as he began to believe in Kurama's word. But if fallen angels truly exists, then what are you both? The Kayubi smirked, his sharp teeth gave him a more feral expression. After classes, wait for us outside the occult research club. Naruto-sama will give you real proof of his powers, Kurama said, beginning to accumulate his own magic. But, if you still don't believe me, then look closely at what I'm going to do. Luckily, you'll be working for your king before midnight. Issei was going to ask what he was supposed to see, but almost in two seconds a black and blue circle with strange symbols appeared under Kurama. Instantly, the redhead disappeared in a blink of the eye. Obviously, a demonstration of something like that made his jaw drop to the ground. What the fuck? The legend of the Bale Child. The night was about to come, the sunset was already disappearing in the horizon. Both peerages were reunited in the occult research club, Naruto and both members of his peerage sitting on one of the couches. Ria's own were in the opposite one, looking at them with mystery and curiosity. Well, just Rias was sitting on the couch, her devil stood behind her. Naruto, will you escape again? The Grimori beauty asked, pouting slightly. I must admit I felt disappointed when you left the other day. Kurama looked first at his king and then to the only pawn in the Phoenix's peerage. Issei was astonished and, after the corresponding introductions, he couldn't turn his eyes away from Rias. He had seen her before, but she was more beautiful in person. No, but before we've our predestined fight, I'd like to ask the question that my new pawn had asked to Kurama today. Hyodo's body immediately trembled at the sight of everyone staring at him. He avoided their eyes, and scratched the back of his head. It's not that I don't believe you all, but if fallen angels exists what kind of being are you? The first one in retort, however, was the Kayubi itself. I'll go straight to the point, I don't want to waste more time, he assured, standing up from his seat. We're devils. Just as he said that, he, Kiba, Akino and Kaneko made a pair of wings to appear from their backs. Issei widened his eyes in shock, his pupils noticing the black color in all of them. Kurama, however, had a pair of red different wings that resembled the appearance of a dragon. You unbelievable. We'll discuss this in a later meeting Issei. Is that clear? Naruto asked, not moving his sight from Rias. She was sitting stoically, her blue-green eyes looking at her opponent with seriousness. Hyodo nodded quickly, his mind now clearly believing what they had just said. He needed more answers, but it seemed that something big was going on between the blonde and Rias Grimori. H. Hi, Naruto Senpei. There were no difference between their ages, but the Phoenix paid no mind. You know Rias, there has been a reason for me sticking to two surnames. Rias raised an eyebrow in curiosity, I noticed it. And I know that having no recognition of any of your clans forces you to act like that. Exactly, Naruto replied, 
standing from his seat. Well, let's have this conversation later. We both have a fight to solve. The Grimori nodded, standing as well. With a movement of her hand, she motioned Naruto's peerage to follow her. Kiba, Akino and Kaneko walking alongside her. Issei, however, was confused. What's going on with those two? He thought, following them silently. Is Naruto Senpei going to have a battle against Rias? But he's a guy, he can't hit a girl. That would be rude. The girls should be treated with care, their body must to be touched not damaged. There was a blush on his cheeks as the group exited the occult research club, Kurama being the only one who noticed it. With a thick mark on his forehead, he hit Issei's head. Ouch, Kurama-san, why did you? Shut up and calm your mind, pervert, Kurama interrupted, his will managed to hit a smirk when he noticed the expression of anger in Issei's face. You've to pay total attention of what you're going to see. Hyodo nodded and mumbled something under his breath. Stupid demon, he thought, rubbing his head calmly. The group eventually exited the building, their legs took them to the forest's entrance next to the club. It was a perfect site for their fight, since nothing was going to interrupt them. Both fighters stood quite a long distance from each other, approximately 50 meters. Naruto's and Rias peerages stood away from them, the two groups standing a few meters from each other. That way, in case of any sign of threat, they would be able to counterattack perfectly. Issei remained close to Kurama, his confusion only being highlighted by the sight of both opponent looking at each other with seriousness. Let's begin, who would you like to be the judge for this? Rias asked totally expecting that Naruto would choose his own knight. Surprisingly, he didn't. Kiba Yudo, he'll be fair enough. Of course that a choice like that caused confusion and surprise in the Grimori's peerage, but she was the first to recover from her shock. Kiba, could you? Slowly nodding, the blonde knight moved forward and stopped a few meters from both fighters. He looked at his bucho first, but then his sight stopped in Naruto. Okay. This will be a fight without any limitations. You can use any ability you have to defeat your opponent, but you can't kill each other. This ends when someone loses consciousness or surrenders, Kiba explained, gazing at the Phoenix for a few seconds. Good, now, extend your wings. Rias did as Kiba said, and a pair of black bat wings appeared from her back. She didn't restrain them and made them look the most intimidating she could. Her wings seemed more darker than the ones from her peerage, and Naruto couldn't help but raise an eyebrow with interest. Those are nice, like any heir from the Grimori clan should have, he assured, passing a hand through his blonde hair. Do you remember when we were young, and you asked me to show you my wings? Well, how to forget your beautiful face pouting like a puppy? Immediately, Rias blushed and diverted her eyes from him. Did he had to remember that occasion in particular? However, her peerage was having different thoughts right then. They all already knew that she and Naruto had been best friends years ago, but she never told the things they used to do. While Kurama only smirked in amusement, Issei blushed as the thought of Rias Grimori pouting like a puppy appeared in his mind. If Naruto did known her from so long, then he was a lucky bastard. In that moment I denied showing them to you, but now I guess I can't escape from that, Naruto looked momentarily at Kurama and Issei and nodded slightly. The Kyubi returned the gesture and immediately begun to channelize his own chakra. Nobody noticed it though, because he was only rising it to prevent being caught in the incoming effect. Witness, the flames of the Phoenix. Just as he said that, from behind his back, a pair of black wings emerged mightily. However, what the entire group saw almost in a second, made them gasp and tremble of fear. His wings were totally different from any demon, even from those of the Phoenix clan. They were made of fire, true, but it wasn't a common golden flame, instead, a black and blue color covered them. But was that the fact to be scared of? No, of course not. Apart from the fact that his wings were made of black and blue fire, a loud and terrifying sound appeared with them. It resembled the sound of a bird, screaming like it was going to attack a prey. Their size appeared to be slightly bigger than Kurama's own wings, and both the aspect and the loud scream made them something to be afraid of. While Kiba and Issei fell to the ground in fear, Kurama and others managed to remain on their feet. Every one of them had different reactions, being the Kyubi the less affected by the genjutsu Naruto was putting to his wings. It was rather simple, 
since it consisted in emanating killing instinct in form of a bird's scream. Now, both the color and size were real since it reflected his true power. What's wrong Rias chan I thought you wanted to see them, Naruto said, smirking widely. The voice of the blonde, however, was all she needed to broke out from her daze. And, despite being previously shocked, she couldn't help but grin with excitement. Naruto had already dissipated the genjutsu, but his wings remained extended. All in all, they were really impressive. In an act of speed, that almost caught Naruto off guard, the girl ran to him with her hands extended. I wonder what she's planning to do, we both know that she doesn't fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat, he thought, just as his body moved to a side to avoid a ball of black fire flying towards him. Rhea stopped midway, her body being covered by an aura of a red energy. She was really powerful, he had to admit that, and the power of destruction was her main attack. However, he couldn't afford being touched by them, if he was, then he'll have serious troubles. Her energy seemed to increase, because a black sphere with a red aura emerged from her hands and pointed at Naruto directly. He growled, noticing that she planned to make an attack again. Damn, he thought, jumping to a side to avoid the impact. However, while he was busy staring at Rias, he failed to notice that a second sphere was going at him. Though, when he realized it, it was really close to him. This attack seemed more powerful yet slower than the previous one, but it seemed like it were attracting Naruto to it. Jumping in the air, the teen avoided being completely destroyed by the attack but a powerful light engulfed his body. Covering his eyes with his arms, he couldn't dodge the incoming kick that Rias sent to him and that made him collide with the ground. Just in the same time he touched the ground, a small crater appeared under him. The Grimori descended from the air to the ground, her smile only growing bigger as she saw the unconscious figure of Naruto Bale Phoenix lying in the ground. However, there was something wrong in there, was he so weak? No, that couldn't be true. Even if her kick was powerful, her strength didn't compare with Kaneko and the others had felt that Naruto possessed much more power than that. Meanwhile, the others were astonished. Kiba was now on his feet, his legs took him closer to the impact area. Kaneko was impressed with Rhea's quick victory but she also felt a bit, disappointed of the blonde display of power, she really thought that he was a powerful demon. Akino, however, was looking at Kurama who only gestured her with a wide smirk. Issei looked from the Kayubi to Naruto and then to Kurama again, his eyes didn't believe what he saw before. Hey hey, relax kid. This isn't over yet, the redhead said, holding his smirk as he noticed that both Rias and Kiba were looking at his king. But before Hiodo could ask, everyone saw that the unconscious figure of Naruto disappeared with a puff of smoke. Rias and the others widened their eyes, Yuto jumping backwards to look at his surroundings in search of the Phoenix. However, he didn't find him. Rias moved turned her head in every direction, her eyes trying to search for the Phoenix's figure. Here I am Rias Chan. The new source of his voice alerted her senses, which forced her to look ahead. There, in the distance, was Naruto with his black and blue wings. However, a new aura of black and blue energy was surrounding his body. His right hand moved in front of his chest, the palm accumulating his power of destruction. There, almost immediately, a sphere of the same color appeared from his extended hand and shot at Rias with incredible speed. How fast! She shouted, protecting her body with her powerful aura. Naruto grinned archly and continued to shot his attacks. His bale's power was more destructive and faster than the Grimori's own, but also it possessed a bit of his fire natural ability. What's wrong? This is nothing. I'm doing the same that with my wings. And that explained everything. It wasn't his pure power of destruction, because it would be much slower. In fact, Naruto was combining both clan's abilities in one powerful attack that threatened with defeat Rias. However, the only thing she could do in that moment was to protect herself with her natural Grimori's aura. The attacks impacted with the shield, making a loud sound with every collision. And the enormous speed the attacks had prevented her from dodging them or to summon a quick shield. But, despite the power he showed to her, his energies quickly depleted and he fell to the ground panting from the exhaustion. Rias dropped to her knees, her hands touching the ground as she tried, in vain, to recover her breath. Such power, was something to be really scared of if they had a rating game. I guess this is a tie, 
Naruto said, as he continued to tremble on the ground. Rias giggled weakly, her own body charging some power to make a final attack. I'm really sorry Naruto-kun, she started, standing up in a surprisingly shown of stamina. But I've to do this. Trust me, there's no other way. Saying that, her hands raised in front of her chest as a big black sphere begun to materialize. The blonde Phoenix laughed shortly, his eyes closed in realization. So, you really want to have me in your peerage, don't you? The Grimori felt a bit of regret of what she was going to do, but she really desired that. Having a demon of that caliber was something that she really aspired to. Not that she didn't want to marry him, in fact, for a moment she hoped that he could win her. That way, she could break her bonds with Riser Phoenix. Join me, Naruto-kun, she whispered, throwing her final attack at him. It didn't have the power to kill him, because the only thing she wanted was to make him lose consciousness. However, when the impact hit the body of him he disappeared, again. There's no need to say that everybody was more than shocked when he disappeared again, the new sight of him was hopeless for her. He was flying above the sky, his body didn't show any sign of tiredness. Although his wings once again appeared to be really terrifying, the sphere of black and blue energy that he was holding on his right hand seemed to be more amazing. It was different from the other combination of Phoenix's fire and Bale's power of destruction, and now he was using the last of his chakra and the last ability he had. Demonic Rasengan. That attack was like a sphere of pure energy, a blue color centered it while the black power of destruction covered the outside. It was like a flame of dark fire, but its power was almost touchable. In a blink of her eyes, Naruto charged at her. It happened really fast, and the next thing everyone saw was Naruto sitting on Rias with his Rasengan pretty close to her body. The energy, although it wasn't touching her, was already destroying her clothes and her bra could be now seen. Immediately, Rias' peerage moved at incredible speeds and were instantly surrounding Naruto. Kiba had a sword pointing at his neck, Kaneko's hands were curled into fists and she was channelizing magic through her body. Finally, Akino formed a red circle behind the blonde Phoenix, her powerful energy attempted to burn him if he made a single wound to her king. Though, the more shocked was the Grimori beauty. Naruto's blue and calm eyes were now porting a great change, in where they were slitted in red, he really looked like an animal, and even his eyebrow were curled with anger. However, instead of finishing her, the blonde retired his energy in a few seconds, his wings disappearing from any sight and his eyes returning to normal. I think I won, Naruto said calmly, his breath was normal and he possessed no signs of being at least agitated from the previous fight. The three members of Rias Peerage slowly lowered their guard, their attentive eyes taking notice of how the blonde helped her to stand up. Rias however, couldn't stop looking at him. How powerful was he, and his power of destruction seemed to be more effective than her own. But, eventually, her mind forced her head to nod in agreement. Why you did, H. How? She started, realizing that every sight was on Naruto. It doesn't matter, the fact is that you won this fight, and our bet. Way to go Naruto-sama. You were incredible, Kurama assured gaining a nod from Issei who had his mouth opened. His mind couldn't comprehend what he had seen, but the Kyubi had said that that was the power of a true king. Naruto scratched the back of his head with nervousness, the previous seriousness of the fight already being forgotten. Thanks, but you fought really well too. Rias Chan, the power of destruction is strong in you. Rias ignored his words however, and continued to stare at him. You won the bet, she said moving closer to him until her chest was pressed against his own. Do you realize what this means? There was pure admiration on her face, as well as something else that he couldn't notice. However, the repenting proximity forced a blush to appear on his cheeks. Why you don't need to do that? I mean, I'm okay with just winning the fight, Naruto assured, trying to convince her of thinking her next decision very carefully. He didn't want to force her to something like marriage. Her arms moved to hug his neck, her big green blue eyes staring directly into his blue ones. No I'm going to be your wife Naruto Phoenix. From now on, I'll be your fiancé. Naruto and the others widened their eyes in surprise. Akano giggling slyly and Issei cursing silently. I've been desiring this since you left this place. And. Tonight. We'll. Naruto found her lips suddenly moving closer to his. 
his own heart begun to pound really fast inside his chest, was she really going to kiss him? We already did this once. But but what if she doesn't like it? What if she wants, like Akano-san said, a experienced man? Ah uh, why am I doubting? He thought, closing his eyes with nervousness. Both expected for their second kiss to come, but it never did. Himejima, in a surprising act of speed, had stolen Naruto from her arms and he had his face buried into her huge cleavage. She was still wearing the Miko attire from last night, and he could felt her soft skin again. However, he thought he was going to die from the pleasure sensation. Naruto-kun, congratulations! Akano shouted, smirking at the flushed face of Rias. What are you doing? He's my fiancé now, you can't do that to him, Rias frowned, approaching quickly to where Naruto and her queen were. Immediately, her arms grabbed Naruto's left arm and buried it between her breast. Naruto took a deep breath when the impulse released him from the soft prison but flushed when he noticed what Rias was doing. Era era, he's not yours until he defeats your former fiancé in a fight, Akino replied teasingly, doing the same that the Grimori did with his other arm. However, in that moment the blonde gasped in surprise and stared at the crimson-haired beauty. Don't tell me that you're... I am, but not for long. I'll tell Onisama that you'll be my husband and that will break the contract. Rias explained quickly, trying to avoid any further conflict between Naruto and his cousin. Akano, finding that an opportunity to incite Naruto, spoke. But Riser won't be pleased when he finds out that Naruto-kun is going to be your... Riser Phoenix. He interrupted, looking at Himejima with shock. She nodded with a sneaky smirk, it was happening like she planned. I see. So, this is my chance to make my return known in the underworld. He said, noticing that Kurama agreed with that. Issei, however, was more confused than before and remained silent. Okay. Listen up. From now on my name is Naruto Phoenix. Datbeo. And I'll defeat Riser at any cost. Of course that that acclamation surprised everybody, but as they were distracted with Naruto's speech every one of them failed to notice the figure who had been looking the entire fight with extreme interest. It was a beautiful girl, though her appearance was hidden in the dark of the imminent night. She was standing on the branch of a nearby tree, her eyes delighted with the blonde man who showed a great power to the group of devils reunited below her. He's really interesting, not to mention handsome, NYA. Maybe I have found my destined mate NYA. Her voice echoed through the empty forest behind her, but in an instant, she wasn't there anymore. A few days had passed since Naruto and Rias fought in their engagement battle, everything returned to normal, and even the Phoenix and his knight had been assisting to class as much to their female classmates' joy. Thanks to the Grammary beauty, she had managed to give her fiancé the abandoned club of music. Not that they used it to play any instrument, but it had good space for their meetings. Issei, on the other hand, was now working for the Blonde King. He went out twice to get his first contract, but due to certain causes he wasn't able to achieve them. His clients, however, were satisfied with his work and wanted to make a contract with him in another occasion. There's no need to mention that Naruto was really surprised. Both him and Kurama had managed to get 30 contracts each of them, the majority consisted of pretty and lonely girls who wanted a date with a handsome guy. However, their souls wasn't enough to ask for sex. And both devils were grateful that that didn't happen, since Naruto was now engaged in Kurama. Well, let's say that he was just waiting for the right woman to lose his virginity. Now Naruto didn't stay with Rias alone since that night, due to that her peerage was always near her. Akano was the most teasing with the blonde, and she seemed to like him. Much more than that, perhaps, since she always liked when he blushed at her actions or touched her breasts. All in all, the Grammary lady was jealous of that. Currently, the crimson-haired girl was looking the sunset through her window, her long hair blew slowly with the wind. She had a hand on her cheek, the memories of her past were filling her mind with nostalgia. Era era, thinking in Naruto-kun already? Rias kept her sight in the landscape ahead of her, but she managed to answer, Hi, he has been in my mind for some time now. The Grammary assured, ignoring the sly giggle of her queen. His power really surprised me, and the fact that he used those copies of himself is unbelievable. Oh, so you didn't notice it? The question came almost immediately, the black-haired girl smirking in delight. The Grammary, however, turned her head slightly to the side. Her pretty blue-green eyes looked at Akano with confusion. What do you mean? Well, everyone noticed his lack of power, 
Akino explained, waving a hand in front of her face with disappointment. I can tell that he was holding back with you. I don't know why, but I felt some kind of weird magic coming from behind his back. Do you really ignored it? Her king widened her eyes with surprise. Are really? She asked, turning completely to gaze at Akino. Her expression turned into one of realization and sadness. Be but. Why? Himahima sighed in resignation, her hand tapping her lips twice. Well, it's not that hard to find out why. Even if he doesn't show any sign of it, he cares for you deeply. I don't know if it's love yet, but. A are you saying that? Rias interrupted, her cheeks blushing furiously at what her queen said. Akano nodded with some sort of jealousy, her arms crossed under her breasts. I. I would have to ask him directly. Though, I'll like you to keep an eye on that energy behind his back. Maybe that's the real source of his weakness. Just as she said that, Kaneko entered the room, sorry to interrupt. Both girls gazed at the petite devil, the grammary's lips curling into an excited smile. Kaneko. Please tell me that you made any progress in finding Naruto's house. Much to her dismay, Taju shook her head slowly. No and not even Kiba-san could follow his trace. Era era. Looks like Naruto-kun is very sneaky, Akano assured, giggling at the frustrated expression in Rhea's face. It was like that since he made his presence known to her. She had sent all of her peerage's member every day to try to find his home, but with no avail. He was like a ghost, who disappeared after classes ended. Letting out a sigh of resignation, the female king turned her body and looked through the window. There was another option to meet him in private, and that will have worse consequences. However, it was her last option even if the entire underworld and the Kuo Academy's students find out her engagement with Naruto. She will have to go out in a date with him, risking their secret engagement to be known by everybody. The legend of the Bael child, hey, are you okay? There, on the ground, was lying a young nun with a veil on her head. She seemed to be approximately around Issei's age, though he couldn't guess since her face was hidden from his sight. Itai? I stumbled again. She had a pretty voice, much like her feminine figure. Hyodo helped her to stand up, his hand pulling her from the ground. Oh, I'm sorry. Arigato gozaimasu. Immediately, the wind removed her veil. Issei gasped as he noticed how beautiful that girl was with her long blonde hair and green eyes. Her hair flowed all the way down to her back, with split banged over her forehead and a single strand sticking out from the top, sloping backwards. All in all, she was a real beauty to Issei, who couldn't help but blush at her face. Asia blinked in confusion, her green eyes noticed the aspect of the boy standing in front of her, however, her innocence made her think that he was ill. Hmm, sir? Are you feeling good? Your face is red? Issei suddenly broke out of his daze, what, oh haha sorry, I was just lost in thoughts, that wasn't a total lie, in fact, his mind was trying to give his heart an explanation of why he was feeling like that, though, that excuse didn't answer her question but she quickly forgot about it, traveling? Not at all, I was just assigned to this town's church, she explained calmly, her voice managed to confuse Hyodo again, you must be from here, I'm Asia Argento, pleased to meet you. She gave him a deep bow, her appearance of none being highlighted with that action. Issei couldn't recognize it at first, but she was obviously not from Japan. Eh ah hi. My name's Issei Hiodo, he shouted, returning the same deep bow she gave to him. But, in a few seconds, his back returned to its position. I think I saw a church near here, would you like me to take you there? Asia's face immediately brightened, a happy smile adorned her face. You would? Oh thank you. All of this is thanks to God. Issei blushed once again, a excited grin appearing on his lips for an instant. However, when he saw the rosario hanging around her neck, he couldn't help but feel really uncomfortable. Naruto had explained to him many things in their second meeting, and one of them had been the effects of the light and holy objects. So, obviously, a devil had to escape from touching them or even entering churches. Soon, they began to walk in direction to the nearest church in the town. No words were spoken between each other, and even if Issei was feeling a bit affected by the pure energy of her rosario he also didn't care. Her beauty was enough for him to endure any adversity, or so he thought. However, not even when Asia healed a boy's Neil Issei's opinion changed of her. 
Having a sacred gear like him was something that made him more enthusiasm about the fact of being her friend. It was true that he was a devil and she a nun, but it didn't matter if he only offered her his friendship, right? But eventually, they reached their destination. It was an old church, nothing abnormal but the feeling he was having in that moment made his body shake with fear. Yes, this is the place, thanks to God. Asia let out a sigh of relief, which Issei thought as a sign that she was relieved that he had to leave. With a sad expression, he lowered his head and turned around. Then I'll go this way, he pointed forward, not desiring to waste a second more. Surprisingly, the girl had taken the sleeve of his shirt to stop him from leaving. A bit taken aback, the boy turned his head to the side and noticed that she was smiling at him. Wait please, I'd like to prepare you some tea. Oh, but I've other things to do now, he said, cursing inside his mind when he saw that she seemed sad. Ah hey, don't worry, we'll see each other again Asia San. That caused the effect he wanted on her, in a moment, her happiness returned. Hi, I'm looking forward to it Issei San. In the end, even if he had to leave, even if she smiled at him, even if their friendship was forbidden Hyodo didn't give a fuck. He'll meet her again, no matter the cost. The Legend of the Bael Child, it was another day in Kuo Academy, the sun was shining and the birds sang to make their joy known to the world. For Naruto and Kurama, that was a bad day. For them, it didn't matter if they were already used to the feeling of weakness during the day. With a weather like that, even the fangirls were nothing compared to the sun. Neither Naruto nor his knight bothered with wearing Kuo's uniform anymore, and were now wearing their usual clothes. The Kyubi's red kimono and Fennig's black jacket gave them a wild look that was attracting all the attention at the frontal gates of the academy. The blonde sighed in sly frustration, his hands tried to cover his eyes from the daylight that was hitting him. Just as usual, their fan girls were admiring them with whispers and mumbles. Kurama wasn't terrible affected by that, but he couldn't deny that it was bothering after a few times. Naruto-sama, the voice of a certain girl made him gritted his teeth behind his lips. Unfortunately for the blonde, the girl who spoke was the president of his fan club named, stupidly, lovers of the most amazing man in the earth. In other words, L-O-T-M-A-M-I-T-E. Please go out in a date with us, and, she had almost the entire females from classes 1 and 2 behind her. Kurama held back a snort and just smirked at his king, his teasing side suddenly appeared. Well, looks like you've become really popular, E.H. Kayubi almost laughed at the face of resignation that Naruto put on, but a new voice made his expression turn really grim. K. Kurama-sama. We'll like to present you a formal invitation to a date in group with us. That would include every one of us satisfying you in every way you desire. That group, despite sounding mature, was more pervert than Lot Mamite. To make things worse, its name was Sexual Fans of a Man with a Big Dick, spelled S F O A M W A B D. How they deduced that Kurama has a big penis, no one knew. And it was more shocking the fact that it was composed of third year girls. The tone of perversion didn't go unnoticed by the Phoenix who just grinned and patted his knight's shoulder. Then, he turned to the group of girls with a smile. I'm sorry, but we aren't available for dating with you. However, instead of just depressing and leaving them alone, both fan clubs asked at the unison. Why not? That took both of them by surprise, neither the blonde nor the redheaded teen knew how to answer their question. Although they always escaped victoriously, this time no one had an excuse. Because Naruto kun is my boyfriend. Naruto almost gasped when he heard a rather feminine voice, whose tone belonged to Rias Chan. Rias Gramori, the most beautiful girl in the academy and heir of the Gramori's clan was standing a few meters away from him. She wore, curiously, a casual outfit, which only highlighted her buxom figure and her natural beauty. It consisted in a short-sleeved pink shirt, with a black necklace hanging around her neck and a black mid-skirt. Also, she was wearing long black stockings and a pair of black shoes. The entire population of females surrounding both teens widened their eyes in shock, but, what made them look really surprised, was the fact that she walked to the blonde and circled Naruto's arms with her own. He blushed furiously, but didn't deny it. Soon, the whispers begun again. Rias Wanisama and Naruto-sama together? Kya, that's so kawaii? No way. I wanted him to be my husband. Even the males stared at the blonde with jealous glares. 
though they did nothing to ruin the moment Rias's apparent happiness and love. And on the other hand, Kurama had a scowl occupying his expression. Bah! Naruto-sama has the support of Grammary san to help him to avoid those stupid fangirls, he thought, gritting his teeth at the sound of the leader from his fan club clearing her throat. It's obvious the fact that Namikaze-san has a girlfriend now, but Kurama-sama don't, she assured, blushing madly at the pervert thoughts passing through her mind. The other girls also blushed, and they had a dreamy look on their faces. Then, I assume, that you're free of any. Suddenly, something interrupted her from finishing her speech. From nowhere, a girl with white and short hair, appeared suddenly. She had no emotion adorning her face, and the only thing she did was to intertwine her hand with Kurama's own. Obviously, that caused a great commotion of every one of his fans but he was the most surprised. K. Kaneko-san. W. What the F. Fuck are you? His question stopped midway, however, when the girl's fist collided with his left hip. Kurama gasped in pain his knees threatening with lose their strength. His eyes diverted slowly to the side, the vision of the girl who apparently was hiding a smirk made him growl. I don't like that vocabulary. Besides, you are not allowed to insult in front of your girlfriend. Her speech was the detonant of many gasps and screams of surprise. Kurama and Kaneko, together. Hey I didn't know you and Kaneko-san were dating. Nice man. The voice came from Naruto who was now grinning as Rias had her eyes closed in apparent delight. S shut up, it's not like, the Kyubi tried to deny it, but the girl once again hit him on the hip. With a mix of anger and pain, Kurama almost fell to the ground. Why yeah, Kaneko-chan is my beautiful girlfriend. There's no need to say that every girl started to cry in frustration, though, nobody noticed the slight blush that adorned Tuju's cheeks. The legend of the bale child, hum, Rias Chan, Naruto suddenly asked as they both were sitting on a bench in the park. His fiancée had her arms still encircling his, and she had a dreamy and happy look on her cute face. Why did you suddenly took me on a date? I mean, it has been really fun and all but I'm still confused. It only passed two hours since Kurama and Kaneko left on their date, much to Naruto's amusement. Apparently, Tuju wanted to know more about the Kyubi's Yukai power and took him in a date to ask him about that. It was obvious that she did that with no other feelings involved, just her curiosity since it was a strange opportunity to talk with a Kitsune. However, despite Naruto's worries about his own date, that went perfectly with his fiancée laughing all the way. And it was a good coincidence the fact that he decided to wear casual clothes that particular day. He was happy of course, and a warm feeling had his mind trapped in thoughts. The Grammary air opened her eyes slowly, her lips finding their way to the teen's ear. Silly, I don't need an excuse to date my fiancé. Besides, do you feel uncomfortable with my presence? Naruto closed his eyes in nervousness as he felt her hot breath hitting his nimb, he do felt a bit uncomfortable but he really liked her. Maybe even more, but he didn't want to force her to do anything against her will. And no, it's not that. Rias Chan have you spoken to Sirzex about my return? Rias sighed in resignation, her face moving until she was veer close from him, not yet, but I'm planning to do it in a few days, she assured, smirking very slightly at the blush on Naruto's cheeks. The Grammary giggled softly, her arms circled his neck. But, for now, would you accept my gift for our first date? He gulped sonorously, his mouth opening very slightly to answer her petition. He had doubts, since that would be their second kiss and he didn't know if his abilities in kissing would be enough for her happiness. However, the sight of her eyes closed and her lips approaching at him made him blush. T this will be. His thoughts were interrupted by the Grammary, who stopped just as their noses touched each other. Do you really want to know why I was so excited to fight you? She received a shaky nod from Naruto as the answer. Because, despite all the time that I spent away from you, I still love you Naruto Phoenix. The young man couldn't even get surprised by what his fiancée said, since her lips were finally against his own. Naruto widened his eyes in surprise, but the warm and soft feeling of Rias' lips eventually made him lean in the kiss. He moved his arms to hug her tightly against his, her large bust pressed lustfully against his chest. Their second kiss was getting more perfect with every second they spend there, and neither both of them wanted to broke it. Rias, however, was experiencing nothing more than pure love and adoration. This was the moment she had been waiting for so long, and the man she loved was with her. Life could be great sometimes, or so they said. 
But she eventually pulled away, receiving a of disappointment from the blonde man. What's wrong Rias Chan? He whispered, searching her lips again. The Grammary avoided the contact and put her head on his shoulder, Naruto. Would you care to explain why did you hold back against me? The question took him by surprise, his hands pulling her gently to look into her eyes. What are you talking about? Don't deny it. Akano noticed the strange magic coming from behind your back. Just as she said that, Naruto gasped in surprise. His eyes suddenly widened, and a repenting feeling of sadness allowed the previous joy to disappear. So, she noticed it, eh? There was a tone of disappointment on his tone, but she couldn't guess what was happening to him. Rias Chan, what Akano san saw, was a seal. I ordered Kurama to put it on my back to seal half of my power in it. Rias nodded in acknowledgement, however, there was a question inside her mind. That would explain many things, but why? Did you really want it to protect me? The Fenix smiled quickly, his own hands cupping her soft cheeks lovely. That's the main reason, true. But the story behind this is just too sad for me. Please, don't force me to remember the death of Hinata. Those words escaped limply from his lips and a lonely tear fell from his left eye. He didn't really wanted to talk about it, nor that he desired to remember the tragic incident. But Rias was astonished and surprised. A hey, Hinata. Biba W what happened? Immediately, she regretted asking him that. It was really obvious that he was fighting to hold back the horrible feeling of remember about that person, and Rias didn't push further. I'm sorry Naruto-kun, I shouldn't have asked. The blonde shook his head in disagreement, his hands holding her hips with deep care. P please understand me, I don't want to lose you like I lost her. She was my only friend during my exile, and seeing her die was just too much pain for me, he explained, briefly remembering the times they spent together as friends. I love you Rias and I swear I'll do anything to protect you. Rias covered her mouth in both surprise and sadness, the happiness of hearing those three words made her forget about everything she heard before. Slowly, her lips moved forward and met Naruto's own in a gentle and tender kiss. The boy quickly returned the gesture, his mind focusing in the amazing sensation of the Grammary's lips against his. Soon, they were lost in their own world of happiness. N Naruto-sama, unfortunately for them, someone had to come and ruin the moment. Slowly pulling away, both of them broke the kiss, a small trail of saliva connected their lips for a second, before their eyes locked in the other's stare. Surprisingly, there was a blush on Rhea's cheeks, her own eyes shining with a new feeling that made Naruto's heart to melt in astonishment. After all that time, he finally noticed how beautiful she really was. Slowly, his eyes diverted to the side, the new sight of Kurama's desperated face made his body to tremble in expectation. W what happened? Where's Kaneko? The Kayubi had his eyes widened in terror as he spoke, never, never again. I'll never date Kaneko to Zhu again. That made both Rias and Naruto blink in confusion, but soon both were laughing at Kurama's poor attitude. The Gremory looked slyly at her lover, his smile making her laugh to stop for a moment to gaze at him with awe. In the end, it was the best date of her life. The legend of the Bael child, many events had transcurred after Naruto's and Kurama's dates, and Issei was currently screaming at his king. It seemed that, during one of his contracts, a crazy stray exorcist called Freed Selzin had killed the occupant of the house. Hyodo eventually found out that Asia Argento was the man's assistant. Of course that, in her innocence, she didn't know that he was a bad man. However, after the man said that he was going to kill Issei she began to cry and beg for Freed to let him live. Unfortunately, the man was too cruel to accept that and hit her cheek with anger. That obviously put Hiodo furious, but his strength was too low to fight against an exorcist. Soon, his possibilities of winning were reduced to zero. Kurama and Naruto appeared in that moment, the night sword revealing a dark blue metal that shined with the poor light of the room. The king didn't attack and allowed his servant to kill Freed with a single blow. However, the man wasn't stupid and escaped immediately. On the other hand, Asia had been forced to left with him and Issei was now asking for permission to rescue her. They were reunited in Rias club, both peerages were there as Hiodo talked. Naruto Senpei, please, you've to let me go, he shouted, making his sacred gear to appear suddenly. The Phoenix sighed in resignation his own curiosity of analyzing his gauntlet was replaced with the bad feeling that he was going to regret his future choice. 
Naruto looked at Rias who had her hand intertwined with his own. Smiling, she kissed his cheek and nodded briefly. If you want, I can ask Kiba and Kaneko to go with him. Akano and Kurama will take care of the little group of fallen angels patrolling the northern entrance, and we can enter by the front to eliminate the remaining enemies. Issei nodded quickly, his mouth opening to thank the Gremory for what she said, however, he couldn't because Naruto immediately retorted. Well, this goes against my will but I give you permission to go with Kiba-san and Kaneko-san. Hiyodo almost jumped in gratitude, but he managed to thank him with a deep bow. Arigato gozaimasu. Kiba and Kaneko looked at each other and nodded, a little grin appearing on the blonde's face. Count with us. Naruto smiled quickly, his eyes taking notice of the pout in Akino's face. Why can't I go with Naruto-kun? That would be really interesting. Her sultry tone didn't go unnoticed by Rias, who just smirked and kissed the man's lips with a pleasure. Issei looked at Akino and blushed, a perverted expression occupying his face. Kiba and Kaneko sighed at the unison, the girl looking at Kurama with the evil smile which sends shivers down the Kayubi's spine. Himejima, however, didn't react like the Gramary planned. Instead of getting angry, she just liked her lips at the sight of Rias challenging her. Enjoy it as much as you can bucko. Naruto-kun will be mine in the end, she thought, covering her expressions behind a smile. The phoenix was surprised by the kiss at first, but when she pulled away he couldn't help but blush at her happy expression. However, that lasted only for a moment before his old self returned again. Okay, listen up people, we're leaving in. Suddenly, for the shock of everyone, Naruto disappeared from their sight. In where he was standing now there was just Rias blinking in confusion, her head searching everywhere. Hiyodo rubbed his eyes in disbelief before speaking, what the? The legend of the Bael child, Naruto slowly opened his tired eyes, his hand reaching his hair to scratch it. He had a minor headache, but apart from that he was fine. However, the previous memory of him in a meeting made him widen his eyes in surprise. The first vision he obtained through his pupils was the figure of a young girl sitting over him. She was pretty, her long black hair falling down until her hips and gray eyes along with a cute face highlighted her developing beauty. She wore a black gothic lolita fashion, which was really weird for Naruto. Despite the first impression and their apparent position, there was nothing more than calm on her expression. The Phoenix didn't notice any sign of confusion, evilness or anything on her face. She possessed an air of curiosity, but it seemed well covered under a mask of seriousness. The Phoenix blinked slowly for a minute, but the expression in the girl's face didn't change. Air. May I ask who are you? What am I doing here? My name is Ophis, she simply said, gazing at the teen with the same seriousness than before. I've been also called Ouroboros, the infinite dragon. Naruto gasped at that revelation, his body trying to get free from his prison. Well, he wasn't tied or something like that, but having one of the most powerful creatures over him made him grow uncomfortable. Seriously? She nodded as she put her hands on his chest to support her little body. Then, why am I here? I brought you here through teleportation, Ophis assured, using a tone that made it look really normal to her. I've been watching you for a long time Naruto Phoenix, and I've to say that I was really disappointed when that Yukai sealed your true powers. He thought in getting shocked by what she said, but once again she was Ouroboros. He had heard many stories of her, and they said that Ophis can travel through the dimensional gap. In the end, it didn't surprise him if she knew his entire life. What do you care about that? You know nothing about me. Those proved to be very wrong words, and he didn't even notice when Ophis grabbed his neck and squeezed it tightly. Don't talk to me like that. I can end your life with a single finger if I wanted to, she said, making Naruto choke in pain at the strength applied to his neck. Ophis released it, and soon he was breathing quickly to recover his breath. Anyway, you're here to learn the truth about your hidden heritage. Naruto coughed a few times before asking, What are you talking about? Don't you ever wondered why the leader of the Bael clan forbid your mother to leave their mansion? Or why no man could approach to her? Ophis asked, almost smiling when she noticed the confusion on the blonde's face. But, before he could form a question, she continued. Lord Bael was afraid of your mother, because she was the daughter of Great Red, the Apocalypse Dragon. The man immediately widened his eyes at what she said, his own mouth opening to ask what appeared suddenly inside his mind. What? But how? 
It were lustful thoughts that make him had sex with your grandmother. She also participated on it, and he planted his seed inside her. Soon, after nine months, Kashina Bael was born. She resumed most of the story, since Naruto was too confused to understand everything. It was okay, she had time to explain it with all details. Your uncle found it after a few years when they were sparring in a friendly match, and the power that your mother used was far greater than any super devil of the underworld. Naruto gasped once again at what she explained, his eyes narrowing in confusion. I if that is true, then why she didn't tell me? Maybe because she wanted to wait a little longer, she had never met her father in person, but Kashina wanted to talk to him. Ophis explained, approaching her face until her lips were kissing Naruto's nose. I hate him for stealing my home. I want to destroy him, but I do not owe his offspring. I don't hate you, Naruto. In fact, I found you quite interesting. The blonde blushed at the contact of her soft lips pressing gently against his nose, but he didn't complain about it either. He was more worried about the newly revelations, s so. That means that I are. Hi, she answered, pulling half an inch away and grabbing his cheeks with her hands. You're Great Red's grandchild. You have dragon blood running through your veins. Naruto's heart stopped beating for a moment, his cheeks blushed furiously with both surprise and embarrassment. Just after revealing the truth to him, Ophis did something that he wasn't expecting. Taking his momentary shock, she had approached her lips to him until both were sharing a soft kiss. Of course that his first reaction was to widen his eyes. Then, he tried to pull her away from him. However, his body didn't respond to him. In fact, it was like the dragon held him in place. She began to increase the passion of the gesture, cupping his cheeks with her bare hands. Ouroboros seemed to be completely calm about it since her eyes were closed and she didn't make any sound. Though, no sign on her face showed that she was being affected emotionally by the gesture. In fact, if you looked closely, you could have noticed that she was doing something with her hands, though Naruto didn't realize it. On the other hand, when Naruto was beginning to feel desperate, something broke inside him. Suddenly, a sharp pain came from the point the seal was placed and he closed his eyes in ache. Ophis mouth prevented him from letting out a cry but he couldn't help but try to focus in the embarrassment he was feeling to avoid thinking in the pain. However, the horrible feeling soon disappeared. Taking its place, a warm sensation invaded his body and an old power returned to him. W what's going on? D did she? He thought, noticing that his old strength had completely returned to him. And, despite what he felt at first, the calmness of his ancient energy soon flowed through him and relaxed his nerves. Soon, he was returning the kiss without even thinking in the consequences of doing that. But, as soon as he began to forget about his surroundings, Ophis pulled back suddenly, a thin thread of saliva connecting their lips until she was a few meters away from his face. Naruto immediately regretted doing that, but in the girl's face there wasn't a single trace of regret, nervousness, embarrassment or even a simple blush. She was serious like at the beginning, and her hand reached to clean her lips. How was that? Ophis asked, moving her hands until they were on his chest. Bibaka, do you realize what you did? Naruto answered, turning his sight to a side to avoid her stoic expression. I'm engaged. Her face immediately reached his lips again, silencing him with superior command. Her tongue win a weak battle against his and soon she was exploring his mouth victoriously. However, she broke the gesture after five seconds. Don't misinterpret things Naruto Phoenix, she said noticing that he wasn't looking at her. Using her hands, she turned his head until the eyes locked again. That kiss didn't mean anything to me, and my only goal was to give you my blessing. Oh and, apart from that, I broke your seal. Naruto gritted his teeth, the thought of kissing a lowly made a bit of shame to appear inside his mind. What is that, blessing, of yours? I'm a devil, I can't receive the bless of someone? The dragon almost raised an eyebrow at his own words, no no. This is different. This kiss was nothing more than a gift from my part. The blonde looked at her with anger and embarrassment, but he obviously didn't understand what she wanted to say. It's not that hard to comprehend. When I said that you had dragon blood, that didn't mean that you can unlock its powers by your own. That's why I gave you an opportunity to show me how powerful you can become with your dragon form. He snorted at that, showing the deep disbelief that he was feeling in that moment. Well, that's good and everything but what about Kasen? Is she able to use Great Red's powers? He asked, 
blinking in confusion for a few moments. Ophis remained stoically for a minute, her eyes didn't turn away from the grandchild of the apocalypse dragon. Hi. However, her dragon blood is more stronger than you, that's why she can control it perfectly, she explained, taking note of every change on his expression. Even though, that would be a perfect explanation to why you, unconsciously, killed your best friend in the war. That's an ability that some dragons has, called, Juggernaut Drive, which allows the user to receive an unbelievable boost of his powers to win every battle. Though, even if you were stronger enough without it, your anger forced that energy to control your mind. In the end, you lost your sanity and almost died in consumption. Naruto almost gasped as the explanation hit his ears. So, Hanada's death forced it to stop controlling me? The blonde asked, letting his hair cover his eyes with sorrow. I can understand though, I was really mad when I saw my comrades dying one by one in the hands of Obito's forces. After saying that, both went silent for a few minutes. The phoenix was trapped in the grim memory of Hinata Hayuga losing her life on his shaky hands, and Ophis just kept her sight on him. However, it didn't pass much time before another doubt forced his brain to momentarily forget about her death. I thought that only Diedrich and Albion have that strange ability, but Great Red too. Ouroboros nodded almost immediately as the only answer. The phoenix couldn't move his body, but his head was free and he turned it to the side again. I'll need time to process this. The girl raised her back a little, her fair skin was now visible for Naruto to look at. However, he didn't possess the desire to do something like that. Time is something infinite to me, she assured, moving once again his face to meet hers. The Chaos Brigade won't go after you, but you must train your bloodline. How to unlock your true form is something that you'll need to ask your mother, since she learned it by herself. Ophis explained, nodding to him. Although you would disagree with this. I'll request your assistance Naruto Phoenix. What do you mean? His eyes once again diverted from her face, he was still ashamed of being kissed so deeply by a young girl. She suddenly felt something similar to amusement, and couldn't help but gave him a little smile. I'm asking you to join the Chaos Brigade. The Legend of the Bale Child. Naruto opened his eyes as the sound of his alarm hit his numbed ears. It seemed like the sunlight was entering through his window, and barely illuminated his room. Despite that, it appeared that it wasn't so late in the morning. The first feeling his body received was something really soft and warm pressing against his left side. At first, he didn't feel the pair of arms hugging him tightly, but soon he almost jumped out of the bed as he noticed who was lying next to him. Rias was sleeping calmly in his bed, her naked body pressing against his own, and, of course, her huge breasts were touching his skin. He felt that his friend was waking up as his eyes took notice of her beautiful figure, and his expression turned desperate. Why Rias Chan is in my bed? Oh man! Did we do something like? Well, that, he thought, noticing that his left arm was on her lower back. More precisely, it was touching her soft and round ass. Immediately, his eyes widened at the uncomfortable situation. Well, it wasn't uncomfortable at all, but even if he liked it he wasn't a pervert and the fact that her body was pressed against his prevented him from moving away from her. For that purpose, he almost gasped when he noticed that she was stirring. Almost after a few seconds, her eyes finally opened. Sitting on the bed, her sight inspected the unknown room for a few moments, before landing finally on the teen resting next to her. Rias blinked two times in apparent confusion, but her mind finally forced her to react and to smile warmly at him. Oheo, Naruto-kun. She whispered yawning briefly. Meanwhile, the boy's pupils were locked onto her big tits. The long crimson hair fell in a seductive way and accented her breasts, making them look more appeal. But, due to that, he failed to notice that her lips were approaching until it was too late. Their lips touched each other, and Rias gave him a tender kiss. Naruto widened at the sudden contact, but soon he was returning the gesture. The kiss, as always, was something soft and lovely that shown the great love and adoration that she had for him. Apart from the fact that he also loved her, how could he resist to such beautiful woman? Rias eventually broke their union, their lips remained connected for an instant, before pulling away gently. Hmm. I've really missed you Naruto-kun, the Gremory said, giving him a quick peck. He blushed slightly at her words but he couldn't prevent Rias from hugging him tightly again. She put her head on his chest, a happy sigh of joy escaped from her lips as she closed her eyes with delight. 
Naruto was going to stroke her hair, but Ria stopped his movements with her next words. Two days ago you disappeared from the club room without any warning. Where have you been? Naruto widened his eyes at what she said, his mind gave him the memories of everything that happened before he fell unconscious when talking to Ophis. I. Arias Chan, what happened to me? He asked, diverting the question. He was beginning to feel uneasy. The man had thought that it had been a simple dream, but now that she mentioned it, she suddenly raised her head until their eyes were locked. Moving her body closer to him, she pressed her big breasts against his chest. That, of course, made him blush from the perverted thoughts he was having then. Thanks to Satan that I've my boxers covering it, he thought, noticing their compromising position. Naruto kun. Her hand rested on his hot cheek, sending a warm shiver down his spine. Don't you remember what happened? Well, yeah, but I thought that my conversation with Ophis was just a simple. Ophis, Rias interrupted, making Naruto's mouth to close abruptly. Have you really talked with the infinite dragon, or Oboros? Seeing that he would have to explain everything to her, his throat exhaled a deep sigh. Naruto told her about his short speech with Ophis, the revelation of his true heritage and the blessing she gave to him. Of course that, when he finished, he seemed a bit scared of how she would react to the kiss he shared with a little girl. However, instead of screaming at him or getting angry, she just shrugged her shoulders and hugged him more tightly than before. Whoa, Great Red you said? That's amazing, and it would explain why Kashina-sama was always locked in that castle. She analyzed the entire situation quickly, her admiration for her fiancé grew more and more with everything she learned about him. And? Did you enjoy it? I mean, the kiss? Naruto shivered noticeably before answering, W what? No, of course not, she was just a lowly. Luckily for him, that seemed the only thing Rias needed to smile again. Well, that's good since I'm sure that you prefer my kisses rather than any powerful dragon. Right? Noticing how quick the nod was she couldn't help but giggle. But soon enough, her good mood wavered a bit. A lot of things happened in these days Naruto-kun. First of all, Issei failed to rescue that little nun from Rainer. Poor Issei. I didn't meet her, but she must have been a good girl, Naruto assured, his expression suddenly turning sad. Rias smiled brightly and touched playfully his nose, ah, don't worry. She's fine, and currently living with him, the blonde once again widened his eyes and opened his mouth to ask for an explanation, but she answered before he could do so. I never said that Issei had lost the fight. In fact, thanks to Reinare's defeat, I could reincarnate her as my bishop. Naruto immediately grinned at her answer, his pride for Issei grew more with that short story. So, Hyodo beat at a fallen angel with his bare hands, huh? That's pretty impressive, but he will need more training, I can't let my peerage down. The girl couldn't help but blush at the determination in the blonde's eyes, her mind giving her another reason to provide him any support he could need. I, I'll help you and your peerage to become stronger. After all, you're my fiance. Arias, he whispered, gratefully surprised of what she offered to him, smiling warmly. He kissed her forehead. You've done a lot for me since I came here, and I don't know if I can do something to compensate you for your help. She suddenly sat up on the bed her legs moving quickly to accommodate her body over his own. He was going to ask what she was planning to do, but the sudden contact between his covered sex and her own made him blush furiously. Gasping, he gazed over at her naked figure. Damn, she truly looked like a goddess. Hmm, there's a way you can retribute me for my efforts. Naruto diverted his eyes from her naked body and tried to suppress the urge to take her right there. W what D do you M meme? He asked noticing that she was leaning closer to him. Stopping next to his ear, her hot breath hit his nimb. You already know the answer, Naru to Kun. In a moment like that, any normal man would have succumbed to the temptation of having a true beauty on him. However, the phoenix almost pat himself on the back for his efforts on resisting the urge. Arias I. He started, ing slightly as she bit lustfully his ear. Oh man, if this goes further I. Won't. B. Able. To, his thoughts were interrupted, however, by the sound of a masculine voice coming from next to the bed. What are you doing Naruto-sama? The blonde looked immediately to the right side, his eyes took notice of the figure of the Kyubi standing next to them. Blinking in confusion, his mind suddenly forced his body to pull Rias away. K. Karama. 
Naruto shouted, falling from the bed due to a sudden movement. Kurama raised an eyebrow at the sight of his king blushing with embarrassment. His ears caught the sound of Rias mumbling something under her breath and he couldn't stop the smirk to adorn his face. However, he kept his eyes on the young blonde. It's good to see that you're okay. But please, avoid mating with Grammarie San until you are married. Naruto's eyes widened at what he said, his feet forcing his body to stand up quickly. H hey, we weren't doing anything like that, he managed to say, before he paled at the feeling of Rias' body pressing against his back. Why do you have to lie? We're unofficially engaged, but this is natural between a couple. The Kayubi almost laughed when he noticed how nervous his king was, but covered it behind a sly smirk. Well, I don't care about your activities with her. But, as an advice, you should get dressed. I want you to tell me everything about Great Red and your true heritage. A single questino formed within his brain, how could he knew about it? However, Naruto never figured out. Oh no, don't tell me that he was spying us all this time. The scary thought appeared suddenly inside his mind, and he couldn't stop the incoming shiver that made him tremble. The legend of the Bael child, many things had passed since his victory against Rainer, and he couldn't be more happier. Asia was living with him, her gentle and beautiful smile was the joy of his days since he met her. His heart always pounded when he was near the blonde, and he couldn't stop the blush that covered his cheeks. However, although he really liked her, he didn't know if that was love. After what the fallen angel did to his heart, he didn't want to fall in love so quickly with another girl. Even if that woman was someone as sweet and pure as Asia Argento. Currently, he and his perverted friends, Motohama and Matsuda, were standing inside a locker from the girl's dressing room. The fact was that both friends had promised him a VIP seat to peep on the girls if he introduced them one of his female friends. Issei agreed with his partners and gave them Mil Tan's phone number. Poor idiots, he thought, almost laughing inside his mind at the image of the transvestite and her friends receiving them. Whoa! This is great! Issei whispered loudly, trying to memorize every size of bust that the girls had. Look at those opies! Motohama adjusted his glasses with a movement of his hands. See? We told ya! Matsuda agreed with him, even if both of them were behind Issei they didn't need to see. After all, Kyoto had given them the opportunity to meet real and hot girls. This is the best place in the whole campus. To peep, haha! Issei and Motohama giggled pervertedly, the first cheeks died of a slight pink at the glorious sight of the naked bodies of the girls. However, the sudden vision of a certain young student made Hyodo gasp with expectation. K. Kaniko chan he whispered, calling the attention of his friends again. She was only on her bra and panties, and her hands moved to unclip the last piece of cloth that covered her breasts from Issei's eyes. Oh, she's so close, I can almost see them he thought, narrowing his eyes to look better. Unfortunately for him, a scream coming from another girl forced Tezu to stop removing her bra. There, standing in the door, was Naruto Fenix along with his knight, Kurama. Now, neither Issei nor his friends knew what was happening and they feared for their safety. However, the most shocked of the room were the other girls who tried to cover their body from both teenagers' sight. Naruto sighed and gave them a deep bow, sorry if we're interrupting. We'll leave in a few seconds, I promise. His speech didn't go unnoticed by Kaneko, who narrowed her eyes at Kurama. Covering her body, she prepared her fist in case that the Kitsune would dare to look at her naked body. She didn't care if Naruto did because he was engaged and his behavior showed many times his non-perverted intentions. Kurama and his king walked alongside the shocked girls, whose blushes grew redder as they passed next to them. Unlike Kaneko, most of the girls from that class were fangirls of Naruto and that prevented them from getting angry at him or at Kurama. However, in an state like that, none of them dared to flirt with him. Ladies, the Phoenix said, gazing over quickly at two girls who were standing next to the locker in where Issei and his friends were. It's here. Kurama, could you? He couldn't ask further, however, since the Kayubi had impacted his fist into the metallic door. His strength destroyed it and soon they caught the sight of the perverted trio shaking in fear. What the hell are you doing Issei? We've training to do. Issei opened his mouth to apologize, but the rough hand of the knight grabbed the collar of his shirt and pulled him out of the locker. Soon, Naruto was smiling. If you excuse us gentlemen, Kurama said, 
lowering his head slightly before walking through the dressing room dragging Issei with him. Kayubi stopped silently beside Kaneko, who was still covering her body. She only needed a single hint of perverted thoughts from the night, and she would kill him. Oh, Taju san I almost forgot. Rias san has ordered you to find us when you're done. Not surprisingly, the Kayubi kept his eyes on the front door as he spoke, mindless of her apparent warnings towards him. And that gave him the opportunity to left with Issei, who was blushing and drooling at the sight of many beautiful girls half naked. As he left, the Phoenix turned to the group of blushed girls, who were now totally ashamed and furious with the perverts. Please, forgive our interruption. We've been forced to enter here against our will, Naruto explained, smiling in a way that asked for forgiveness. Luckily for him, his explanation convinced the group completely, and no, you don't have to apologize Naruto-sama. We understand, a certain girl reassured him, blushing as she covered her own body with her arms. I appreciate your understanding, but I'm worried about them. Every female noticed that he was pointing towards the remaining perverts, and smirked deviously. We'll take care of them. Another shouted from behind, convincing the man from letting them in their hands. Nodding, he almost laughed as he left. However, he winced when he heard many yells, imagining the beating that both perverts were receiving. Turning to Kurama, who was still holding Issei by the crook of his shirt, Naruto smiled. Let's go, we've work to do. The Legend of the Bale Child Okay Issei, I want you to shoot it again. Can you do that for me? Hiyodo stood gawked at the proximity of Akano on his left side. She had decided to help him, whereas Rias and Naruto worked together, as always. She was surprisingly jealous, but after the truth had been revealed to both peerages she couldn't avoid that feeling. It was like that the heritage of the blonde Phoenix had changed her point of view, and now Akino wasn't after him just to tease the couple. No, she wanted to taste his real power. The pervert blushed nervously, fixing a stare at her ample cleavage, but he soon shook his head to get rid of those thoughts, and tried to concentrate forward again. Hi, Akino Senpei. Do your best, Issei kun, the ex nun said, running away to bring some refreshments for the group. And again, he couldn't avoid looking at her rear, feeling aroused by her looks. She was truly beautiful, gentle, kind and he couldn't think in no other woman than her. Maybe, just maybe, he felt something deep for her. Just as Issei pointed his gauntlet to the landscape ahead of him, Himejima turned her head abruptly, looking at how Rias and Naruto were smiling at each other. It seemed that, judging the fact that a huge crater lied a few meters ahead of him, he had just used a bit of his strat. She pouted slightly, gazing over at the Diedrich's bearer to focus on his training again. It just wasn't fair. Even Kurama, Kaneko and Kiba were having fun with a triple sparring. And however, Himejima was stuck there, with a boy whose perversion know no limit. Well, Akano was going to have her prize eventually, it was okay, Rias can enjoy her fiancé for now. This is unbelievable Naruto-kun, Rias shouted, smiling at the blonde. Your power level is almost twice, no, thrice from the last time we fought. The phoenix grinned as he scratched the back of his head awkwardly, he was surprised as well. It seems different, more pure, and less tainted. What do you mean? Naruto allowed the girl to approach even further, until her chest was pressing against his own. He blushed, obviously, but didn't complain. In the past, when I tried to combine my chakra with the demonic energy, it didn't go as well as I expected. In fact, I think this is the first time that I could merge both energies. Rias seemed surprised for a moment, not to say impressed by his deduction, but she avoided those thoughts and hugged his neck tightly, making his stare to point right into her green-blue eyes. Hum, why there's always something new to find out about you. The phoenix shrugged at the question, moving his arms until they were on her curvaceous hips. Does it bothers you? Not at all, she answered, approaching her mouth to his. Just as both lips touched each other, she stopped. Honestly, that's one of the things I love about you. Naruto felt a warm thrill lashing upon his belly as Rias kissed him, and soon he was returning the gesture. Suddenly, feeling surprisingly aroused by her proximity, he kissed her passionately, pushing his tongue inside her mouth. She showed no resistance, and allowed him to explore her oral cavity, delighted by the initiative he showed. Ah, isn't this disgusting? Young love is just what it takes to make me feel sickly, a voice said suddenly, filled with hatred. The grammary air quickly broke the kiss, 
feeling a chill running down her spine as she recognized the man beside them. Oh no, not now, Naruto, however, gazed first at his shocked fiance, and then to the side, pointing his sight to a blonde devil. Even if it was the first time he saw him, the young devil immediately realized who he was. Razor Phoenix. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.